This conference will now be recorded. The best thing you can do in this time that uh, we have about one month uh, until the exam starts, inshallah, the best thing you do is uh, to study a summary for the important points in all topics. I don't think there is enough time to study all topics word by word, no. This is time to read summary and to solve many, many questions as much as you can. Whatever recalls or solve it box. And what I recommend so much in this time is to do brainstorming with your friends. So don't study alone. Be in a group, okay? Uh, try to meet daily on GoToMeeting or Zoom, whatever, to solve many, many questions as much as you can. So everybody will say all the information he knows. So you will get much benefit from what your friends know. You will take what they studied ready for your training. And believe me in the exam, you will remember every word you hear from your friends. It will be printed inside your memory. Your memory. So get benefit from this. Be in a group, study together, don't study alone. Okay. The meeting now is full. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, the first topic we'll start is a very important talk article. It's an old one from 2011, but very important. There is no exam without questions about teaching. Because in UK as a doctor, you have to learn and also to teach others. Okay, it's your duty. You cannot pass from ST1 to ST2, from ST2 to ST3 without teaching your colleagues, without teaching your juniors and also learning from your seniors. And the best and the most useful technique to learn and remember what you learn is to teach others. That's why teach others. Any topic you studied well, tell your friends about it. Tell them what you learned. This will help you to memorize about 90% of what you learned. So don't miss teaching. It's important for you, the same as it's important for others. Okay, that's why we have to learn what are the learning techniques and what are the teaching techniques. Number one, lectures. What is lecture? Lecture is composed of a teacher or a professor and audience or students. The same what happens in the class inside the schools. Okay, we have teacher and we have students. The teacher is explaining a topic. Very simple technique for teaching, but it has uh, disadvantages. There is no great chance for the students to participate, to ask, and to share their knowledge. This is a drawback in lectures, but it's a very important and a very common technique. Let's see what this professor is saying here in this class for these doctors before their exam. Please, please, please don't give up. With every new day, you have to learn new and new information. Don't be angry when you say, oh, how I didn't know this information before. I didn't study well. No, don't say this to yourself. With every day, be happy that with every day you are learning more and more information. We are doctors. Learning to us never stops until we die, until we leave this life. So be happy when you learn new things. Don't say the exam is difficult, there is shortage of time, I didn't study well, don't say this. Your duty is only to do your best. Don't care for the result. The result is from Allah, not from you. Many people studied very, very, very well, but unfortunately, it was not the time for success. They didn't pass. Other doctors try to do as much as they can whatever because of shortage of time and they passed, alhamdulillah. So don't lose hope. You have a door. This door will be present in the day of the exam. Please, from now, prepare yourself to hit this door and open this door with all the power you have. Even if you have shortage of time, shortage of anything, don't lose this hope, okay? Allah will ask you, did you do your best or not? 
Allah will not ask you, you passed the exam or not. Just do your best. This is your duty, nothing else. And I know that Allah gives success to who try to do their best. Okay, so as you see in this picture here, we have teacher and we have audience. It's simply a lecture. Another method, it's called self-directed learning. The meaning of self-directed learning, I am a doctor. In this year, 2020, I want to learn about hysteroscopy. Okay, I will get books. I will open the internet. I will attend workshops. My target is to learn hysteroscopy this year. Nobody is telling me, do something. No, I am the one who is planning and deciding what am I going to do. It's self-directed learning. Only me, there is no teacher. I put target and I try to achieve it. This is self-directed self -directed learning. Okay, self-directed learning. Another technique, brainstorming. In brainstorming, the teacher, even uh, it can be either not present or present, but not telling information. Just he is telling the students, please tell me what you know about certain topic, but he is not explaining something. So who will talk, who will share the students, the candidates, they will say what they know. And they can make a summary for what they said on a flip chart. This word flip chart is mentioned in Stratog, in brainstorming. So it's a keyword. What are the keywords in brainstorming technique? There is no teacher, or the teacher is not explaining something. Who is talking? The students, the candidates. The same what you do when you study with your colleagues on good meeting. You are doing enough brainstorming. There is no teacher here. The benefit is everybody will share what they know. So we can collect many, many data and we can summarize them on a flip chart as we said. Okay, another technique, it's called Delphi technique. This Delphi technique is used by mass media. How? A question is asked on TV or asked on the internet. And many people will reply to this question, okay, by sending answers through email, SMS, uh, through phone calls even, okay, through messages on the messenger, whatever. And there's a keyword here that there is a facilitator who will collect this data to summarize the final answer to this question. So Delphi technique by mass media, question asked, many, many people answer by phone, by SMS, emails, phone calls, whatever, and there is facilitator will collect these data to summarize the feedback and answer. Okay, like in this picture, question, letters, 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 facilitator will summarize, we will have final analysis and final result. It's Delphi technique. The next one, fish pool method, hold it stomach, fish pool. Why this technique is, uh, it's name like fish pool. Because fish pool is usually rounded, rounded. Because in this technique, the students are sitting in circular manners. Circular, yes, circle like the fish pool, like in this picture, circle, 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 circles around each other. And all of them are looking at the center, the center of the circle here. So here in the center, Okay, there can be teacher and students and in the outer circle students, outer circle other students and so on. All are looking towards the central circle to differentiate it from donut technique, it will come later. So, fish pool in the exam, if he told you that you were sitting in circles around each other, thank you, it's fish pool technique. If he told you in the exam there is facilitator collecting uh, uh, the answers to summarize them, thank you, it's a Delphi technique. If he told you student and teacher, thank you, it's lecture. Students second sitting together sharing knowledge, thank you, brainstorming. Very important keywords. 
another technique, problem-based learning. Here, the most important point here that they are talking about clinical problem. For example, we are sitting together. Doctors, uh, we had yesterday a case of antipartum hemorrhage, happened so and so, so and so was right, so and so was wrong. And can you tell me, how can we improve solving this question and solving this problem? It's a problem-based learning. It can be sometimes confusing with brainstorming. Brainstorming, talking about a topic. Problem-based, talking about clinical problem, clinical case. This is a difference. So don't be confused. It's similar to brainstorming, but talking about clinical case or clinical problem. Okay. Another technique, one minute perceptor. In the exam, if he told you a method of learning and teaching composed of five steps, he said five, yes, answer one, one minute. Because one minute perceptor is made of five steps. What are the five steps? I ask a question, the student answers. I listen to the student. <coughs> Then I give the student a comment and tell him how to say the answer in a better way. It's one minute perceptor technique. Question asked, then a reply was given and I give it back and how to improve and I tell the student what was right and what was wrong. It's one minute perceptor composed of five steps. Straightforward, okay? And the steps, commitment, Justification, application, positive reinforcement, reinforcement, and correction of mistakes. Same as I said, question, answer, feedback, pros, cons, finished. One minute perceptor is composed of five steps, finished. It is a key word, five steps. Another technique, directly observed procedure with feedback. Directly observed procedure with feedback. What does it mean? It means that I watch you doing a technique, okay, and I give you my feedback. No, 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 please. Uh, you can take the not better by doing so and so, okay, or uh, it's better. You did well, but it's better to examine the patient using your right hand, for example. So you watch the student, okay, doing something and you give him a feedback. Okay, it's directly observed with feedback. Same like when you ask somebody, um, you can do hysteroscopy by so and so, and then you watch him doing feedback, doing it, and you give him feedback. Okay, the coming two methods are related to each other: schema activation and the schema refinement. What is the difference? Both techniques talking about the basic signs related to the topic, what do you mean? Polycystic ovary syndrome, the basic signs related to it, physiology of ovulation, anatomy of the ovary. This is the basic signs related to it. Let's say, today I am going to talk about polycystic ovary syndrome. I know that when you were undergraduate, you studied this basic anatomy, physiology and anatomy of ovary and ovula ovulation. So, today I will start to remind you of the basic signs. So doctors, today we will study polycystic ovary syndrome. So anatomy of ovary is so and so, ovulation physiology is so and so. I remind you of what you know, and I know you know it before, but I am refreshing your mind. It's a schema activation. Another technique, schema refinement. In a schema refinement, I will explain the physiology and the anatomy at first, but I know that you don't know it before. In both of them, I will explain anatomy physiology, then polycystic ovary syndrome. But in a schema activation, I know that you hear it for the second time. In a schema refinement, I know that you know physiology and anatomy for the first time in your life. This is a difference. 
between scheme activation and the schema refinement. Because there is another technique. I want to explain BCO, but I don't know if you know the physiology and anatomy or not. So I will ask you, do you know physiology of ovulation? No, doctor, we don't know. It's okay. I will explain it at first. You notice here in this technique, I don't know your level of knowledge. So I started to ask you, what is your knowledge about this topic? You tell me, yes, doctor, we know the physiology, but we don't know the anatomy. Okay, I will start by the anatomy at first. So schema activation, schema refinement, I know your level of knowledge. Okay, but the another technique, it's called snow polling, corrected talc. In snow polling, I don't know if you know the basic science or not. I don't know what you know about this topic. So I will ask you what you know about it to cover any point that you don't know. Again, in the question in the exam, ask yourself, the doctor or the teacher knows their level of knowledge or not? If he doesn't know their level of knowledge, thank you, snowballing. If he knows their level of knowledge, ask yourself, they know this data before yes activation no refinement so schema activation schema refinement and uh, can you then please repeat snowballing I and uh... i will explain again the three methods okay in a snow polling the characteristic word in snow polling the teacher doesn't know the level of knowledge of the students Scheme activation and refinement. The teacher knows their level of knowledge. Okay, what is their level of knowledge? It can be they don't know this data before, or it can be they know this no data. No voice. Voice is clear? I can't hear. Hello, voice is clear. Voice is clear. Clear. Voice is clear. Voice is clear. 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 Okay. So let me write it. Okay, the question we want. When you have the question, ask yourself, the teacher knows the level of knowledge of the students or not? If he doesn't know if they know the topic or not, no problem. Because he will ask, him, do you know physiology of ovulation? Do you know anatomy of the ovary? If he said no, he will start to explain it. If the teacher knows their level of knowledge, it will be schema. Okay, which is schema? It can be activation or can be refinement. It will be activation if he will explain things they know before it means he is activating their old knowledge in a schema refinement he knows that they didn't study before the physiology and the anatomy so he will start by the physiology and the anatomy and he knows that they are hearing it for the first time clear now Yes, yes, thank you, sir. Today, I don't know if you studied teaching methodology before or not, so I can use a snow polling. Do you know what is uh, what is uh, what is a lecture? Do you know what is brainstorming? Do you know what is a Delphi technique? I don't know your level of knowledge. But uh, my course candidates, I know they studied these topics before. So today, considered for them schema activation. Clear now? Clear now? Yes, clear. Yes, oh. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. So, so can you explain the Delphi technique? Delphi again. Hmm? Can you please explain the Delphi? Explain what? 
سوري دلفي دلفي تكنيك دلفي يس Use the by mass media, by TV, by Facebook. For example, Facebook can ask us a question and we answer the questions through sending messages on Facebook Messenger. And uh, there is facilitator will collect this data to send at, at, at the end a final answer or final summary for what we uh, answered. Clear? Okay. Next. Oh, it's not snowball groups. So, so uh, what is the keyword for fishbowl? Keyword for fishbowl technique? Circles. This is the keyword for fishbowl. Circles. Sitting in circles and looking at the center of the circle. Looking at the inner circle. Okay. What is snow pole groups? It's not teaching method. Okay, but it's a method to... Hello? Hello? Yes. Is there any uh, volunteer uh, uh, to which we are uh, we are seeing to the center? Is there any, uh, like, uh, we see that uh, one is a teacher and other is a volunteer. And uh, now we uh, see in the circle. The term volunteer comes in um, fish bowl or in some other technique. When one volunteer. is volunteer, and when we are uh, studying the fish bowl, uh, we are looking at the center. What uh, we remember that we looking at the fish, and uh, if there are two fishes, one is a teacher and other is a volunteer, the volunteer student who is telling the things, and other are observing. The other who are looking from the um, from outside the bowl, they are observing what the teacher and the um, uh, volunteer are doing. So, so it means is that there I... the teacher and the volunteers uh, like a fish, and we are looking at them. Uh, yes, exactly. That what that what okay. I got when I studied before. Okay, but the name fish pole came from circles. It's circular like the fish pole. Okay, that's why circles around each other. This is the key word, circles. Okay, thank you. The next one, snow pole groups. It's not teaching method. It's a method of classifying and dividing the students into the class. How it can be done. In snow pole groups, okay, we divide, for example, let's say uh, we have um 20 students <clears throat> for example 20 students okay we can classify them into 10 groups each group of two students they will share opinion about certain question or certain topic how many groups 10 made of how many students two they shared opinion yes now make the groups bigger and smaller number of groups what do you mean they were 10 groups of two students they shared opinion okay let's make it now bigger groups we can make them five groups of four students to share opinion next step make them two groups of 10 students each group then make them one group 20 students it's a method of dividing students to sh to share opinion about something so it's a snow pole groups, a method of classifying students into uh, smaller groups, then bigger groups to become one big group. Okay, if I want to teach you a technique, for example, I want to teach you how to assemble a hysteroscopy. I can do it by multiple methods. First method, this is a hysteroscopy, this is a sheath, this is a telescope, you can do so and so. You saw me doing it? Yes, doctor. Thank you. Salam alaikum. I did now simplified procedural hierarchy. I explained the technique, finished. Nothing else. But there is another better technique to make it by complex procedural hierarchy. Hierarchy means steps or stairs. Hierarchy. This is a hysteroscopy. This is how to assemble the hysteroscopy. Please, doctor, 
take the hysteroscopy. Show me how you can assemble it. Uh huh, uh huh, perfect. You did so right, and so and so you can do it better by doing so and so. Please uh, do it again. Perfect, thank you. Please now teach your friends. It's complex procedural hierarchy. So when you attend a hands-on workshop, they are teaching by complex procedural hierarchy. They show you the technique. They ask you to do it. They give you feedback and they ask you to teach others. It's complex procedural hierarchy. All of us learn at cesarean section by this technique. How? Your senior asked you to assist with him. After multiple cases, you can do it alone and he is giving you feedback. Then you can teach your juniors. It's complex procedural hierarchy. I know that teaching methods are so many. That's why at the end, we will say what is the key word for each technique. Okay, simulation training. If we use Manikan, or like in MRSOG part three courses, if there is a role player, somebody will make, the, uh, will make a role uh, that he is a patient and we will try something. So using role player, using Manikan, using simulator, it's simulation training. Simulation training is a very effective technique, okay? Because as you see in this picture, somebody can ask a question and the question can be answered and he can perform hands-on and he can receive it back. It's a very good to learn uh, instrumental delivery, fetal blood sampling, forceps, ventus, very effective these simulation training techniques. The best to learn a technique, the best method is simulation training. Why? You can participate, you can share your, your opinion, okay? The observer can observe you and give you feedback. Very effective. Simulation training. The keyword using mannequins, using role players. Simulators, generally. What is prompt? Multi-professional training. What do you mean? Today, we will discuss uh, how to manage a case of shoulder dystocia. And you will find, for example, five trainers in front of you teaching you how to do management of uh, shoulder dystocia. The key word here, multiple professionals, multiple trainers teaching you a technique. Prompt. And if you open uh, YouTube and write Prompt, you will find many UK videos about Prompt, teaching you multiple techniques. Like here, this is a screenshot from YouTube, okay, about uh, postpartum hemorrhage, management of sepsis, and vaginal breach. The keyword, multiple professionals teaching you a technique. Prompt, multi-professional. Okay. What is human factors training? You are a good doctor, not only because your uh, hand technique is good, no, because also you can be a part in a teamwork. And even sometimes you can be a team leader. And you are very good in patient safety. So it's not only a matter of hand on and a matter of hand technique. No, no, no. You have human factors training. You should learn how to be in a team, how to be even a team leader, okay? How to be trained in patient safety. These are called human factor skills, okay? Okay. Many kicks and there's a difference between many kicks and OSATs. To be a good gynecologist, you should learn how to deal with the patient, how to take history, how to communicate with the patient, how to take consent, and how to counsel the patient about surgical procedure. Okay? We can assist you doing so in the form of mini kicks. So, uh, if we want to, to see how that Rene takes history, how that, that Rene counsels the patient, how can he discuss with the patient uh, uh, about the management, about different options, it's called mini kicks. 
because each year the trainee in UK should have eight mini kicks, four in gynae and the four in obstetric cases. Okay, so you can show how you can take history, counsel the patient, and so on. Mini kicks. Exam question. By which tool you can assess uh, how the candidate takes history and counsel the patient about different management options? Mini kicks. Mini kicks is formative technique. Okay. Okay, this is how we can assess uh, the trainee in taking history and in mini kicks. In this format, okay, we will assess in history taking, okay, in uh, how he can examine the patient because examination involved in mini kicks. But take care. If you are talking about hand technique, like taking a surgical knot, it's not mini kicks. Uh, doing laparotomy, it's not mini kicks. Doing cesarean section, not mini kicks. Instrumental delivery, not mini kicks. They are OSATs. What do you mean, Dr. Osama? I mean that taking history, counseling, examination, it's a mini kicks. Doing hand technique, taking a knot, an instrumental delivery, fetal blood sample, okay, uh, laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, OSATs. This is how to assess the trainee. Assessing discussion, uh, counseling, examination, mini kicks. Assessment of surgical techniques, okay, cesarean section, operative delivery, um, uh, fetal blood sample, hysteroscopy, laparoscopy, OSATs. Mini kicks, formative. I will say what is formative and summative. While OSATs, can be formative, can be summative. It's a common exam question. He will ask you, many kicks is the options, formative, summative, formative, summative, so and so. Many kicks, formative. OSATs can be formative and they can be summative. Anybody here doesn't know what is the meaning of formative and summative? Yes, I don't know what is the meaning. No, okay. no, please explain. Okay. Okay, formative means, for example, uh, today, Hello? today, if I ask you today, uh, please, Dr. Ahmed, for example, uh, can you tell me what you know about uh, fish pole technique? Dr. Ahmed will explain. I will say excellent, Dr. Ahmed, but we can make it better by doing so and so. Was it an exam? No, it's not an exam. I am just asking and giving feedback. But inshallah, in 29th September, in the exam, in person view, it will be summative. This is an exam. So if the target is to improve performance and to receive feedback, it's formative. In the exam itself, it's summative. So if today, inshallah, uh, doctors preparing for the exam, we will have a MOOC exam today. MOOC test. Okay, after the test, after you solve it, I will give you feedback. It's not a matter of pass or fail. No, I will just give you feedback. Feedback formative, FF. Success or fail, summative. Clear now? So, when you are going uh, to have uh, driving license, driving license, there is an exam there. It's a formative or summative? Summative. 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 Either take the license or not. Excellent. Okay. When you attend a, a workshop about basic surgical skills, it's a formative or summative? Formative. 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 It's not an exam. It's not an exam. Mock test. Formative. I will receive feedback. I still I have time to go to the real exam. The real exam itself is summative. Okay, so OSATs, it is a method, how we assess the trainee in doing surgical techniques, like doing surgical knot, like an instrument's handling. OSATs can be formative, 
that we are giving the candidate feedback or can be summative. What do you mean by summative here? Each trainee in UK needs at least three successful summative OSATs in doing surgical technique. What do you mean? If I told you that I am a trainee in UK and I can do fetal blood sample without being supervised by somebody, Tell me, aha, I am sure you had three successful summative OSATs before. Sure, that's right. Any trainee in UK doing surgical technique without being supervised, he had before three successful summative OSATs. How to do it? For example, I had, um, I did many cases of an instrumental delivery. Okay but I was supervised. I had many formative OSATs. I was supervised and received feedback and even uh, to be assist, assist, assisted, no problem. I feel now confident enough. I think I became clever in doing an instrumental delivery. So I will ask my senior, my senior, please, today I want to do, to, to do summative OSAT. I have a case, she needs an instrumental delivery, please, I want to do it as summative OSAT. He will tell me, okay. He will watch me doing the technique without helping me, without assisting me. At the end, he will sign my OSAT form. He will write either I was competent or he will write he was in the way to be competent. It's a nice word to say failed. <laughs> Understand me? Okay. I need three successful OSAT. After that, I can do an instrumental delivery without being supervised. To, do, <clears throat> to be able to do any surgical technique in UK without being supervised by somebody, you need at least three summative OSATs. Successful, of course, not uh, the three fail, 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 and you are going to do it. No, we need three successful OSATs. Okay. Question came before in the exam. Who can sign to you in the summative OSAT form? Your friend? Your colleague? No, no, no. It should be a senior. Which senior? ST6 and ST7. Or consultant. Because the three OSATs, the three summative OSATs, at least one of them should be signed by consultant. So one consultant, ST5, ST6, okay, uh, sorry. One consultant, ST6, ST7, okay. Two consultant, ST6, okay. ST6, ST6, consultant, okay. ST6, ST7, ST7, no. At least one of them should be signed by a consultant. Okay, next technique, experimental learning. Sir, uh, I have a small doubt here. So can you use? Uh, I will allow questions on intervals. Every few slides, I will open the oh, door for questions. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, can you use iPhone for me? I don't. If I want to use iPhone, I will take it and I will try. It's a matter of trial and error. Uh, where is the menu? Uh huh. Where is the back button? I will try. What I did now is experimental learning. I learned through experience, through trial and error. Can you repair your laptop? No. Try, please. Try. You may do it. Yes, I repaired it, alhamdulillah. It's experimental learning. Experimental learning. Okay. Next method, vicarious learning. You know, when we were children, how we learned opening the door? Nobody told us to open the door by doing so and so. We watched others and we did imitation, taklid to them. We did like what they do. It's called vicarious learning. Vicarious learning. Okay. Somebody taught you how to use um, uh, how to use the TV. No, I watched uh, my brother using it. I watched him using. Uh, the remote control, so I know where is the power button, where are the buttons for channels, and so on. Vicarious learning. Learning 
by watching and observing others doing something and hearing others talking about something. It's a vicarious learning. We all used, used this technique when we were children. We learned how to open the door, how to open the light using vicarious learning. <clears throat> okay, a question can be for the exam. Which tool you can assess non-technical skills? Non-technical. Non-technical? You're not taking history, not doing necessary infection. Non-technical. Like what? Like <clears throat> interpersonal skills. How you deal with your friends? How you deal with the patients? How you deal with your colleagues? Can you do good decision making or not? You can do good decision in the good time or not. And can you communicate only with others? It's called non-technical skills for surgeons. It's how to be a good person. Not only to be clever in your work, it's how to be a good person. How to be uh, uh, dealing with others. It's called non-technical skills. Not that. It came for the exam. The question was, which tool you can assess cognitive and interpersonal skills, technical competences, decision-making, leadership, it's not so. Okay, let's start from the start. Take the slides rapidly to know what is the keyword in each one. Lectures. I know that uh, screen sharing may be slow sometimes. Okay, but listen from me the keyword for each one. Lectures. Teacher, students. Teacher, Teacher explain. and student. Teacher explain. Self-directed learning. I bought a plan for myself. I, I try to study by myself and I try to achieve my, my targets. Brainstorming. The students saying what they know to each other. And they can summarize on a flip chart. Delphi technique, mass media, question asked, answer is collected, facilitator makes a summary. Fishbowl circles. Problem based. We are discussing about a case, not about policies that over and rule. It's about a case. How to manage a case to One minute, made of five steps. Directly observe it. I teach you, I show you doing it, and I give you the data. Directly observe it. Schema activation. I activate your old knowledge. So you will you are listening now to the data for the second time. Schema refinement. I know you, you are now listening to physiology and anatomy for the first time in your life. Snowballing. I don't know if you know it before or not, so I will ask you if you know it or not. Snowball groups. Many groups, each one is small. Then they become larger groups to become one big group. Simple procedural. This is how to assemble hysteroscopy. You, you saw me? Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Complex. You saw me doing it? Please do it in front of me, and I give you a pack, and I ask you to teach others. Simulation. Many can. Simulators. Role players. Simulation. Prompt. Multi-professionals. Explaining a technique. Human factors, like leadership, participating in a team. Many kicks. This is how we can assist you in taking history, examining the patients. Both sets. This is how we can assist you in doing surgical technique. Okay, cesarean, section, laparoscopy, hysteroscopy, uh, whatever. And it can be formative, just to give you feedback, or summative, you need to have three to be able to do it unsupervised. Three successful, of course. Learning by trial and error, experimental. Learning by watching and listening to others, vicarious. Notes, cognitive, 
interpersonal skills decision making okay somebody knows the coming september mrsg part two exam what will be exactly the bus mark somebody knows no nobody knows nobody knows why we know it retrograde after the exam after they publish the results we know that the bus mark is for example 67 percent because <clears throat> even the college they don't know now what will be the bus mark in the coming exam they take samples of uh, the answer sheets they correct it and they draw a curve and they say according to the curve all who get for example 67 percent considered successful it's called norm referenced test it means we don't know before the exam what will be the bus mark we know it retrograde after the exam after they take sample and correct it and they say what was the performance to make a cutoff level for success it's called norm referenced if you are going to attend an exam and you know before the exam what will be exactly the bus mark it's called criterion referenced what do you mean you know before the exam what is the criteria of success 60 percent it's the criteria of success for example if you are going to have <clears throat> oet exam you know that you should get score b at least okay another technique to correct the exams it's called epsative system what is epsative system okay here we don't have a postmark so what happens you will have two exams first exam today for example uh, second exam tomorrow if in the exam of tomorrow you got a score better than today congratulations you passed whatever your uh, mark is second one higher than the first thank you you are successful it's like pre-test and after test if you get higher in the after test you buzzed <clears throat> okay like in this example a consultant is going to have online exercise and he knows before having the exercise that he needs 15 out of 25 to be considered successful he knows before the exam yes it's criterion based or criterion referenced okay mrsog exam is norm referenced exam part one and two norm referenced exam okay small group work what is small group work it's like uh, al azhar mosque in egypt if you enter al azhar mosque in egypt you will find many small groups one group studying quran one group studying fiqh one group studying aqida they are separate groups it's called small group work they will not coalesce later it's not snowballing groups no everybody is studying something every group studying something it's called small group work okay i advise uh, the candidates in my in my courses okay to divide themselves into small group work to study together study together make a small group of two or three maximum four candidates maximum four friends study together daily solve the questions do brainstorming together it's a small work group okay uh, okay the next technique it's called donut donut it's not used in medicine used in kindergartens kg okay they ask uh, the children to be in circles the difference here the inner circle is looking at the outer circle so let's say they are two circles they are not looking at the center no they are looking at each other so one group in one group out 
looking at each other. It's called inside out technique, not used in medicine, but they put it among these options in the exam, so you know it's not used in medicine. Okay. As a doctor, as a trainee, in UK, you should have what's called TO1 form, Team Observer 1. It can be for in the exam. Okay. Uh, which technique you need feedback from multiple observers? It's a team observer one. What is team observer one? Uh, to have uh, your annual appraisal, we need to be sure that you are having a good feedback from your friends, from your colleagues, okay, from doctors, nurses, midwives. So uh, the assessor will need eight TO1 forms from your friends and from your wives and the nurses to see what is their feedback about you. You are a good one, you are kind, or you are dealing badly with them, and you are not good doctor. Okay, it's called team observer one. After that, the appraiser or the assessor will summarize this TO1 form into one form. It's the summary about you from your colleagues. It's called TO2 form. TO2 form. So TO1, it's the opinion about you from your friends, from your midwives and the nurses. It's done annually. We need eight forms about you. Then it's summarized in the form of TO2 form. It's one form summarizing all opinions about you. You are good or bad. So you can have your a successful appraisal and successful annual review of competency of progress ARCB. So it's a TO1, then summarized multiple TO1, eight at least, eight at least, to be summarized in the form of TO2. I will receive questions from you or who wants to ask your name? Open and say your name directly. Name? Uh, sir, can I ask a question? Name? Sir, can I ask a question? Ankita. Antika, uh, Ankita. Okay, Ankita. Uh, at first, solve this question, then I will receive yours. Start, please. Oh, okay, sir. You are asked to teach a gynecologic emergencies at the emergency department monthly teaching. Unfortunately, you have not been able to ascertain the grade or level of the previous gynecology experience of those who are attending. You start by getting the casualty doctors to discuss basic pelvic anatomy and then the basics of the early pregnancy. Next, you base the level of your further teaching on the level of the knowledge that displayed in this initial basic subjects. Uh, sir, it's a snowballing because uh, the, uh, the teacher doesn't know the uh, knowledge the trainees are uh, possessing. Perfect. So it's snowballing. E. Perfect. The key word is here in the third line. You have not been able to ascertain the grades of their previous experience. I don't know their level of knowledge. It's snowballing. Perfect. That's right. Thank you. What is your question, Dr. Ankita? Uh, sir, if uh, suppose uh, if a student has completed two uh, summative OSETs, and now uh, she is taking the third OSET. Hello? Dr. Ankita, are you here? Okay, until she comes. Who wants to ask? Can I, can I, sir? Can I participate? Dr. Yes. Dr. Sumaya? Yes. Okay, please solve this question at first. Okay. Uh, every year, a hospital accepts 12 new trainee as a part of the training program. What is the best method? Even the new trainee before they engage into the hospital. Governance, mini-takes, uh, 
इंडक्शन इंटरव्यू लेक्चर वट इज द बेस्ट मेथड टू न्यू ट्रेन बिफोर इट इज इंडक्शन इंटरव्यू perfect See? that's right that's right when the new trainee come to the hospital okay the consultant or the senior will have a meeting with them so he can discuss and ask them what is their level of knowledge what they are planning to learn what they learned before what are their wishes its induction or introduction interview if option d was not present choose appraisal because induction interview is apart from appraisal you are right perfect dr somai d is the answer what is your question you have a question dr somai no 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 sir not yet oh, okay thank you thank you perfect d is the answer okay can i answer sir yes please start dr swati Swati, okay, here you are. Do please speak into pair. I'm given a question or topic. Pairs combine to make a four, and then again to make an eight, and the topics get more complex. And the groups of eight then feedback to the whole group. Snowballing in groups, sir. Perfect. That's right. That's right. Snowball groups. Okay, many small groups. Then squalies, squalies, squalies to become one one big group. Snowball groups. That's right. Thank you. Sir, one doubt, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, can you please explain knots, sir? I could not understand, sir. Explain what? Knots. Knots. N O T S. Knots. Okay. Non-technical skills for surgeon. To be a good surgeon, it's not only sufficient to have good hand technique. No, you should be a good leader and participate in teamwork. You can, you should have the ability to do good decision taking. You know, Doctor Swati, what are the main causes in litigations in obstetrics? Birth hypoxia. When they investigated why birth birth hypoxia happened in hospitals, what was the cause? Inability. To read CTG. Could you interpret the CTG? Second one, inability to do good decision. Okay. It's something not clinical. Yes, it's non-technical skill, but very important and the very important cause for litigation. In the UK. You got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So maybe you are very clever in doing cesarean section, but you are bored in taking a decision. Okay, the case is obstructed labor, and you are lazy in taking the decision. Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, I have a question. Okay, Doctor uh, Asima. Yes, sir. Okay, please solve these three questions at first. Okay. Can you Yeah, uh, the facilitator. Uh, reminds a group of learners about the physiological pathology and anatomy of ovarian tumors management. Uh, there, these are three questions. What is the keyword here? Yeah, here the uh, he is recalling them the previous knowledge. Perfect. So, so in schema activation. Perfect. Activating their old knowledge. Second question. A method of five steps, including commitment and justification. It's a one minute perceptor. Perfect. If you said five, say one. Thank you. Three. A group of students sit together to discuss certain topic. So it that is. is uh, brainstorming. brainstorming. Perfect brainstorming what if they are discussing a clinical case or a clinical problem problem based then it becomes problem based case based problem based learning problem based learning, problem -based learning. okay uh, ice breaking what is ice breaking if we have a doctor who had the exam multiple times and he is not performing well 
his senior can sit with him asking him why you are performing not in the better way do you have any problem any problems at work any problems at home it's ice breaking this is ice breaking okay when you are talking with somebody who is having a problem and you are trying with him to solve it it's called ice breaking okay yes doctor okay. Your, your question Let, please uh, is there any difference between the case based um, uh, problem solving and the mini clinical examination so what is the difference because there also we, yes mini mini cx and uh, this um, no. case based discussion and this problem solving look mini cx is one of the duties that you must do each year as a trainee you have to get at least eight mini kicks each year foreign dining foreign obstetrics okay what do you mean i mean there will be a senior standing with me while i am taking history examining the patient counseling the patient and he will sign the form of mini kicks for me okay it's mini kicks a wild discussion it's something you can do it okay if you don't want no problem okay if you do it you will get benefit from others and so on but it's not a duty the duty is mini kicks it's a must to be done to pass from uh, st1 to st2 st2 to st3 you should each year have mini kicks okay it's very important to be present in your logbook which is your electronic portfolio it's a point that must be covered by each trainee okay okay so what about the uh, case based discussion from its name case based discussion it's like problem based learning we are talking about a clinical case a case we okay, saw in the hospital for example problem. how we and can improve our performance in this case and so on so is this case based and problem based same they are near to each other very near to each other both of them talking about a clinical problem and the clinical case okay thank you sir thank you so the answer is exactly as you said perfect thank you lectures students and teacher brainstorming teacher not participating maybe just organizing but who is talking students delphi mass media and facilitator problem based talking about clinical case one minute middle five steps directly observe it with feedback showing you technique and watching you doing it and giving you feedback schema activation activating your all the knowledge so you hear the information for the second time schema refinement you will hear the information for the first time snow polling the teacher doesn't know the level of knowledge of the candidates. Simplified, watch me doing something, salam alaikum. Complex, watch me, I will watch you, give you feedback, teach others. Simulation, many can, role player, simulators, OSATs, surgical skills, can be formative, can be summative, many kicks, formative for taking history and the examination. Prompt, multi-professional, experimental, learning by trial and error. Vicarious, learning by watching and listening to others doing something. Assessment can be norm referenced like MRCG exam. Criterion based like occupational English test exam and IELTS. You know what score you should get. Ipsative, you will have two exams. If you do better in the second one, you post. Vicarious learning. Okay, learning by watching the others doing something. And it's repeated. Vicarious is repeated. Donuts inside out. Circles, but inside out. Somebody has a question. Uh, can you explain? Can you explain uh, when you uh, uh, appear in the second uh, day, you will pass? What about what, what we call it? Ipsative. Ipsative. 
you will have it's two simple. exams, okay, three exam and both the exam. You need to perform better in the second one. So they try know to what do is prompt. Prompt. Try to do best first exam. Prompt. And if it is no prompt. Try to do bad in the first exam. <laughs> so you can pass in the second one. Okay. Hello. Yeah, also, can you please tell about uh, self directed learning again? Self directed learning. You are putting target for yourself, you try to achieve it. Okay, you I want to learn. Can you tell about the prompt? Learn. Can you just repeat prompt? What is prompt? Okay, look, uh, for any repetition, you can watch the video. I will not be in a vicious circle. <laughs> okay, for any repetition, watch the video. I will give you videos. I will put the videos on YouTube, inshallah. Inshallah. Dr. Usama, okay. I would like to ask about the TO1. Uh, do you include just the colleague and uh, consultant or the patient as well? No, it's from, <clears throat> we need eight. It will be from your uh, consultants, from your colleagues, from midwives and the nurses. Look here at this what the RCOG website said about TO. Yeah. TO1 will be taken from your consultants, your seniors, your trainees, and from the staff. The patients are written? Not written. No. Not written. Notice, we have another place for the mm -hmm. patients. How? While doing the appraisal, okay, <clears throat> uh, the appraiser will discuss with you any compliments, something good, and any complaints, something bad against you from your patients and from your colleagues. He will ask you why you had a complaint from your patients. Your patients are complaining against you, doing a complaint against you. All this will be discussed in the appraisal. The next topic is how to calculate the dose of. Hello, sir. Yes, and it will be the last question because uh, today this lecture will be 12 hours duration. 12 hours duration. And you will only have the first part. Yes, please ask. It will be the last so, question. Uh, which, which formative assessment tool to check cognitive, psychomotor skills, behavior skill of any trainee at Nots. NHS? Not. Huh? Non, non technical oh. surgical skills. Not. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. It's a recall. It's a recall question. Yes. Last year. Uh, sir, can I ask my question, sir? I had to leave because of poor internet connection. Uh, any any further questions? Okay, please you can uh, send it to me on WhatsApp um, starting from tomorrow, inshallah, oh, because okay. I have 12 hours lecture today. I will finish 10 p.m. Uh, cable time. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, it's a simple formula about how to calculate local anesthesia dosing. Simple formula, 3 or 7 over 10 multiplied by body weight over concentration. What do you mean? And when to use 3 and when to use 7. You will use 3 if you are using local anesthesia without vasoconstrictor, without epinephrine, I mean. And you will use 7 if you are talking about local anesthesia with vasoconstrictor. Okay, let's have an example to apply this formula. I will solve it. Again, what is the equation? 3 or 7 over 10 multiplied by body weight over concentration. And we said three if local anesthetic without vasoconstrictor. Seven if with vasoconstrictor. Okay, A 80 kilogram woman, thank you. So here, write 80. Uh, CTG pathological, you will do forceps and uh, you will use 2% concentration lignocin without. So I will use three. 10%, so I will write two. Don't write 2%, write 
just write the numbers two one point five without percentage okay uh, leg no can without so we will use three it will be three over ten multiplied by eighty over two ten zero two four it will be twelve milliliters this is the maximum dose to be used you can use less than this number this is the maximum because more than this can be toxic toxicity from local anesthetic can occur by two methods either by mistake you injected it intravascular it will be immediate sudden toxicity or it can be just absorption from the tissue you injected it right inside the tissue but absorption was high it can lead to systemic toxicity it will take 15 to 25 minutes to give symptoms of toxicity okay okay let's take um another question about local anesthetic can't, sir can't can't see the screen can't see the screen Clear it's visible. You can it's visible, sir. It's visible. You can you can shift the screen to the right or the left. If you are watching my camera, you can shift the screen to see uh, the PowerPoint. So we can see you. Thank you. Okay. In this question, he is asking you what is the maximum dose directly. I will use three if without vasoconstrictor and the seven if with vasoconstrictor take care well for this question it's from one of the box three milli per kg without seven milli per kg with vasoconstrictor or he can give you an example giving you the body weight concentration and telling you if it's with vasoconstrictor so you will use seven or without so you, you will use three Okay, we said if you inject the local anesthetic intravascular, it will lead to immediate toxicity, sudden toxicity. But if you inject it um, and there was high absorption from the tissue, it will take 15 to 25 minutes to give toxicity. So what do you think? 15 to 25. Here's a question asked about if it's it was 10 not to 25 b you are right b is the answer it was not intravascular so it will be delayed to exist 15 to 25. if he said that you did mike's mike's rafia 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 you are my friend rafia okay mike please okay so if asking you about uh, accidentally injected intravascular sudden toxicity not injected intravascular so tissue absorption 15 to 25 okay yes if there is toxicity of local anesthetic the max the antidote for local anesthetic toxicity is intralipid 20% not 10%, 20%. The dose is 1.5 milli per kg. Per kg. Milliliter per kg. 1.5. So patient 70 kilos will receive about 100 milli. This question asking about a woman who had local anesthesia toxicity and she is having resuscitation and asking what antidote we can give intralipid 20 percent 1.5 milliliter because it's uh, fluid like colloids 1.5 milli per kg so we can say we will give her 100 milli because her body weight is 70 kilos okay this is antidote concentration 20 percent 1.5 milli per kg okay uh we have here an emq about uh, teaching who wants to solve 
name Unmuted. Nikita Sorry. sir, I can try. Nikita, okay. Nikita, okay. Open your mic again, please, Dr. Nikita. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Here. You are asked to initiate ideas among group of junior trainees. You get the trainees together so they can explain what everybody knows about a topic. Brainstorming. So brainstorming, perfect. And here the rule of the teacher is just to organize. He will not explain. They will talk. The students will talk. So excellent. It's brainstorming. He will just organize. Okay, number two. You're required to explain the management of hirsutism. You begin by physiology and biochemistry and get, then give the basic concepts. Then you give the group a series of in to lead a group of senior trainees on concepts in the clinical of activating the recall of the relevant tutorial. That I think it's a schema activation. When you solve number in three, many. solve number three. You're required to explain the management of hirsutism. You remind them by physiology and biochemistry. Okay, this, uh, yeah. And give the basic concepts. Then you give the group a series of in to lead a group of senior trainees on concepts in the clinical, activating the recall of the relevant term, them tutorial to clarify their understanding. This is schema activation, sir. The one before is schema refinement. Because we Excellent. begin directly by physiology and biochemistry. So it is, uh, a refinement excellent in question number three he said that they know this data before they know the basic science before but in question number mm. two he explained it and the based upon mm. what he explained they will apply it into clinical questions it's not mentioned that they know it before so True, number sir. two schema refinement number three activation he will activate their old, uh, their old knowledge. They know it before already. Okay, it's mentioned here. Uh, you remind them. So they know it already. Mm -hmm. You remind, yeah. it's the key word. Notice, yes, sir. activating, the word activating in number two is a trick. Why? Because in the same meeting, you explained physiolo physiology anatomy. And based upon it, you apply into practical questions. In the same meeting, it's not all the knowledge. Okay, please, number four. You're required to explain the management of hirsutism. You don't know the level of knowledge of the candidates. I'll go for snowballing. Perfect, thank you. If you don't know the thank level you. of knowledge of the students, it's a snowballing. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. Okay, uh, this EMQ is a recall one. It's a recall. Who will solve the next one? It's also a recall question. Who will solve? I need a name. Sir, can I solve? I will try, sir. Michael, thank you. Dr. Dainish, I think. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, you are asked to initiate. Uh, you are asked to initiate ideas for research among the group of junior trainees. You get the trainees together. Yeah, everyone contribute ideas, experience, and different perspectives. These are the uh, these are recorded onto the flip chart. It is brainstorming, sir. There the multiple ideas are coming. What is the keyword here? Uh, initiate the ideas. You get the uh, trainees together and uh, contribute the ideas and experience and different perspectives. Flip chart also is a keyword. Flip chart. Okay. To summarize what he said, so he is just organizing their data. Flip chart. It's a keyword. So brainstorming. Perfect. Next question. The lecturer gave the student tutorial on the anatomy, physiology, endocrinology appropriate to amenorrhea, followed by a series of clinical cases, which including the post chemotherapy amenorrhea, Turner syndrome, hyperprolactinemia, complete androgen insatiable syndrome. The learner recalls what they have experienced in tutorial and attempts to solve the clinical problem. This is a, a, a problem based learning. Hmm. Okay, shukra gazeer. Think twice. I will mute all mics and please open yours again. 
he is explaining anatomy, physiology, basic science, followed by clinical cases based upon the basic science. What is it? Schema refinement. Schema refinement. Basic science, then apply it. And do not mention schema that you know the basic science before. So, which schema? schema. Refinement, as he is teaching the them, refinement. not reminding them. Excellent. So, the question. You are required to teach a group of junior trainees on the subject of change in the postmenopausal woman. In first instance, you ask the trainees to recall their axis. It's schema so have... activation. Excellent. So they know the hypothalamus, pituitary, ovarian axis, and he will re refine or he will recall their data about the axis. So it's a schema activation. They know the axis before. Perfect. Thank you. Who will solve next? Sir. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Name? It's a recall yes. question. Dr. Sama, why it's not snow brainstorming? Because, uh, sorry, snowballing, because he's asking. Asking what? He said, uh, you ask the trainee to recall their access. Ask him a yatlub while I say sal. Okay. Mm. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Who will solve the next one? Name? Dr. Ahmad Madi. Dr. Ahmad Madi, okay. Uh, which formative assessment tool to check cognitive? non-clinical skills, behavioral skills of any trainee at NHS. Uh, non-technical uh, specific notes. Non-technical skills of surgeon. Perfect. D is answer. Yeah. You're right. It's a recall question. Yes. Second one. Which form of summative assessment is used for a trainee to assess his yearly performance? Uh, ARCB. Uh, Perfect. Annual review of competence of progress. What is the difference between ARCB and appraisal? ARCB is a specific for the trainee in the training system. Appraisal done for any doctor and even done for non-doctors, for midwives, nurses, workers, everybody working in the NHS, he has annual appraisal. Trainee doctor, they have ARCB. So here it's ARCB. If he said the doctor is not uh, a trainee, it will be appraisal. Okay. Okay, this is the screenshot about not non-technical skills of surgeon, cognitive, decision making, and uh, leadership. Okay, perfect. Excuse Thank me, you. sir, I had one question. Okay. I had one question about the previous question, sir. Hmm. Sir, uh, why uh, cognitive, non-technical, and behavioral is uh, NOTSS? Why is it not workplace-based assessment? It should be WPBA, no, sir? Okay, look. All methods of assessment are under a big name. The big name, workplace-based assessment. Workplace-based assessment includes ARCB, appraisal, mini kicks, knots, includes everything. Workplace based assessment is the general name. All these topics under this name. Okay? Okay, Here, okay. Thank you, he sir. Wants, he wants to be specific, this is knots. Okay? Mini kicks, OSATs are workplace based assessment. Okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's start Essex directly. This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Essex. We have four pillars of Essex in UK. Autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and equality. Autonomy means that the patient has the right to give a decision as long as the patient has good mental capacity and she is competent, she can take a decision. Our role to give her options, pros and cons, but she is the one who will take the decision 
and we will respect her wishes. Number two, beneficence. Do good. Non-maleficence. Don't do harm. I mean, don't intend to do harm. Do you think our practice with the patient is harm-free? No, there is harm. If a patient suffered from wound infection, it's a harm, but not intended. We didn't intend to do it. So don't intend to do harm. Okay, e equality means to be fair, dealing with all patients, having same conditions, same management, and the same dealing. No discrimination according to age, according to sex, according to religion or ethnicity. Very important. In the exam, he asked the following are of uh, medical ethics pillars except, and he added additional one. It was uh, something about harm. Okay, we cannot avoid harm 100%. Okay, complications of the procedures, side effects of medications are harm, but not intended. Okay. To take a consent from somebody, this body should be competent. What is the meaning of competent? I mean the patient understands what you say and they can remember what you say, not having um, serious problems in the memory. He doesn't remember what you say. And the patient should be able to do balance between pros and cons. So he can uh, give you a decision and they can communicate this decision, decision. How to communicate a decision uh, by verbal? He can tell you, I want surgery. What if he is mute? Mute, yes. He can write, I want surgery. What is if he, if he cannot write? He can select, I need this one. By any method, even by blinking. Please, if you accept, do blinking if he cannot speak at all and doesn't have arms, for example. Okay, so communicate is important. This what was mentioned according to Mental Capacity Act 2005. My friends, consent is very important. If you do surgical procedure, okay, if you do examination even, even examination, even touching the patient without a consent, it's a sexual assault or battery. Okay, so don't touch the patient. Okay, without consent. Don't examine without consent. Everything with consent. Consent, I don't mean to be written consent. Okay, consent is mainly verbal. There is no written without verbal. You know, if you had verbal consent, but uh, there is no written one, okay. It's a small problem. But if you do, if you have signed consent without verbal discussion, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. That's why verbal is a must. Plus or minus written. Some cases, some conditions need written consent. Okay. While uh, counseling the patient, try to make even small part of the discussion in private. Maybe she wants to say something uh, and she doesn't want her partner or her friend to hear about it. So make part of the meeting uh, in private. Okay. The age groups in relation to consent in UK. 18 and more, 18 years and more. What do you mean by 18 years? I mean this person celebrated the 18th birthday. We said happy birthday to you. It's 18th adult. This one's adult. Adult is considered competent. What do you mean competent? Any person 18 years and more, we consider him or her to be competent. So able to take a decision. Unless you suspect something else. I think that this patient is having something um, in the psychological condition. I think he is having psychological problem. Okay, now we need to check if this person is competent or not. But generally, we consider adults to be competent without checking 
unless you suspect something else. Okay, below 18 is a child, child. But we gave 16 and 17 some rights of adults rights. What do you mean? 16 and 17, we consider them competent. They can uh, give you a consent, but take care. They don't have the right to refuse. What do you mean? A child 16 years old, as we said, we consider him competent and he, he can give consent for surgery. And he has acute appendicitis and the council about the urgent need for surgical appendectomy, but he is refusing. Oh my God, he is refusing because he is a child. It's natural to be afraid of surgery. Here we can overcome his decision by the decision of the parents. If not available, the court. We can call the court. We have a child, so and so, he is having so and so. Okay, you can do surgery for him. So 16 and 17, consider the competent. They have the right to, to give consent. But to refuse uh, treatment or refuse surgery, you can overcome this by consent from the parents or the court. 18 and more adults, they have all rights. 16, 17, they have the right to accept. But to refuse, we, need, we can overcome this by parental consent from the parents. Okay. Uh, what about less than 16? We need to assess the mental capacity. We need to assess if this child is genetic competent or not. What do you mean genetic competent? Genetic competent means to be able to understand me, to communicate with me, and remember what I say, and they can balance risk and benefit, and they can communicate a decision. Below 16, you have to check genetic competency or mental capacity, whatever the same word. Okay. What if this child is refusing treatment or surgery? You can overcome by the parents. Of course, you can do it with 16, 17. Sure, you can do it with less than this. Okay. What about further competency? Further is a specific for termination of pregnancy, uh, specific for contraception. And the Lord Fraser gave the children, okay, the right to have sexual activity, not below 13. Let's say some important things. What is the age of medical legal consent to have sex in UK? What is the age? Age of medical legal consent. 18. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. 13. They are in similar age, so not 13 and 20. No, there is large difference in age. There is no sex below 13. Sex below 13 is a child sexual abuse. It's a crime, a crime 100%. Between 13 and 16, okay, it's not a crime. They are two students in the class having sex. Okay, what is their age? Between 13 and 16, no problem, no problem. As long as uh, there, is, uh, th there is no one having authority upon the other, no problem. Okay, Dr. Osana, very important question. Can a child 12 years old to give consent for appendectomy? What do you think? Cannot give consent for yes, 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 can consent. Can give. Yes, can give, but if Gilly competent, if Gilly competent, he can consent. 
to take the mental capacity if okay then can give consent but can't refuse check the genetic competency competent take consent not competent don't take consent you can take consent from the parents it's called parental parental uh, consent so there is no lower cutoff level to the age in relation to checking genetic competency so child 10 years can give you consent for a vasectomy yes if he is genetic competent if not genetic competent okay take from the parents are you sure sure 100 percent there is no lower age limit in checking the mental capacity to take consent nine years yes eight years yes but it's something logic that the older the age okay that the child will be more and more genetic competent if not genetic competent don't take consent whatever the age if you have a person 30 30 years old but doesn't have good uh, mental capacity you think this person has psychological problem don't take consent from him so there is no lower age limit in checking mental capacity or checking genetic competency to take a consent there is no lower age limit there is no lower age limit don't say 13 there is no lower age limit again to summarize 18 and more adult having all the rights without checking the mental capacity as long as he is talking with you well okay 16 17 can consent less than 16 check mental capacity below 18 can accept but cannot refuse you can overcome refusal okay we will stop after five minutes because of the prayer inshallah okay okay so refusal of a child can be overcome by parental consent no problem further further competency is specific if you are talking about consent to receive contraception and to, re to receive termination of pregnancy dr osama further rule was done to talk about contraception why you are saying that it can be applied where is it it can be applied for termination of pregnancy i bought you a screenshot from the gmc website okay it will come from the gmc that the original rather was done for contraception but it can be applied also for termination of pregnancy and having a portion okay okay so if you have a child who is not gel competent and you need consent for a appendectomy for example who can give you consent the parents the mother or the father if not available and this child is living with a guardian somebody taking care of him okay take care from him oh this child is an orphan yatim living in orphan house okay the manager of orphan house social services can give you the consent okay local authority like the manager of orphan house okay even if this local authority is transient after time he will return to the parents okay we can take uh, consent even from the transient authority okay if what if the child needs a procedure and the parents are refusing for example he needs urgent appendectomy the parents saying no oh my god they are putting the child in danger you can contact the court take your phone in the hospital there is phone for the court available 24 hours hello please i have a child his age is so and so he needs urgent surgery and the parents are refusing the court authority can give you consent they can tell you please proceed for the best interest proceed so if there is difference 
between what you think is best for the child and what the parents think, you can return to the court, al qada They have phone number, available 24 by 7. You can call them. Okay. What, in what situations I need consent? Everything needs consent. Everything needs consent. Okay, to examine the patient, you need consent. Verbal is enough. But if examination under general anesthesia, written consent exam question. Again, examination under general anesthesia, written consent, not verbal. Gynae examination, verbal consent is enough. In the presence of a chaperone, chaperone means mehrim. Okay, who can be a chaperone? Maybe the partner of the case, relative of her, friend of her, or hospital staff like the nurse. Anybody of them, any one of them can be chaperone. Chaperone is a must. Doctor, I know that you are going to do vaginal examination for me. I, and I am sorry, I am very shy. I cannot accept having a chaperone watching me being examined. Okay, he can stand beside us and do not watch. Or he can just stand beside the door. But presence of chaperone is a must. Doctor, I refuse the presence of any chaperone. I am sorry, I cannot examine you. Don't examine without chaperone. Okay? At least chaperone standing beside the door. Or chaperone present, when you say, please come, he can come. Don't examine without having a chaperone. Okay, breast examination, not routine in our work. It needs verbal consent, and the chaperone is a must. Any intimate examination needs chaperone. Okay, what if during surgery, I found a pathology? I didn't expect that this, that this, this pathology is present. For example, uh, we have a case of subfertility. We are doing uh, laparoscopy and the dye test. Interoperative, we found endometriosis. Can I manage endometriosis? I will ask you, did you take consent? Did you discuss with her about that there can be endometriosis that needs treatment? Actually, no, don't touch, don't touch. Do what was planned, laparoscopy and the dye finished. Don't do adhesiolysis. Don't do uh, excision of endometriosis. Yes, I, discuss, I discussed with her about this possibility and she was accepting having so. Okay, proceed, you can do it. Okay. What if intraoperative, uh, I did injury to the bowel? It must be repaired. It must be repaired. Okay, it must be repaired. Don't say, I didn't take consent for that. It's something life-threatening. It must be repaired. And you can debrief to the patient later about what happened. And you have to apologize about this mistake. Okay, uh, according to duty of candor. Candor means saraha, to be frank, to apologize for the mistakes. Okay. It's unwise to proceed with any additional surgical procedure without discussion, even if this means second operation. What do you mean? I was doing lab and dye. Intraoperative, I found ovarian cyst. Did you consent to do cystectomy? No, don't touch. Don't touch. But it's a big cyst. It will need a surgery. Don't touch. We can discuss with her later and we can have another surgery. Don't touch without consent. Okay. Um, you are doing hysterectomy and the ovary looks suspicious. You want to remove it. Did you take consent for that? No, don't touch. Don't touch. But this mass looks to be cancer. It's suspicious mass. Just you can take a biopsy from it. Without consent? Yes, without consent. So taking a biopsy from suspicious mass without consent, no problem. Very important exam question. Came before multiple times. You know the question about X and Y, X and Y, X and Y. 
you are going to do x you found y don't touch y without consent but looks to be cancer take biopsy biopsy no problem what if i was going to do uh, um, um, a surgical procedure for example i was going to do total hysterectomy intraoperative the surprise there is intrauterine pregnancy stop the procedure don't do it don't do it stop the procedure what if intraoperative i found ectopic pregnancy treat it it's life-threatening treat it without consent yes without consent so intraoperative if you found ectopic treat it you can do salpingostomy of course here try to avoid salpingectomy don't remove it you can just remove the mass remove the ectopic although we know according to nice and gtg salpingectomy is better but here i think salpingostomy is better because you didn't take consent okay sterilization what if you have a patient um, who has down syndrome down syndrome she needs um hysterectomy she's down syndrome she doesn't have good mental capacity to do operation including sterilization the patient will be sterile you need opinion from the court not enough here to take consent from the family you need consent from the court because it includes sterilization for example bilateral salpingoophorectomy hysterectomy she will be sterile we need consent from the court because it includes sterilization termination of pregnancy rather rule what if the woman won't abortion and her partner is refusing we will abort or not what do you think abort or not well abort if patient wants to abort abort to abortion abort. 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 The parent refusing. It's his baby. Hmm. Can we abort? This mother is responsible for the baby. Mother has a The answer is abort. The answer is yes. abort. Abort. I don't care for the partner opinion. Don't care for the partner opinion. She is the mother. She is pregnant. Okay. She has the one to take the decision. What if uh, during uh, um, a woman in labor. A woman in labor. And we want to counsel her about cesarean section. We have a bad CTG. We want cesarean section. Okay, you can counsel her in between contractions. In between contractions. Okay. Don't counsel the patient about uh, sterilization okay uh, while she is in labor so she is in labor she will have cesarean section don't counsel her about tubal ligation except if this discussion happened before and all what is remaining is signature she was counseled before she was accepting uh, uh, tubal ligation and she can sign no problem but don't start uh, counseling about sterilization for the first time for a woman who is in labor, it's bad technique. No, it should, it should happen before. Okay. Consent is usually verbal. Written is needed in some situations, like if it's a surgical technique, like a hysterectomy, cesarean section, written consent. An instrumental delivery in the theater, written. An instrumental delivery in the labor world, verbal is enough okay examination under general anesthesia written consent written consent take care before written there should be verbal consent discussion i mean okay let's take um about advanced direction and yes what is next of kin next of kin 
it's one of the friends or one of the relatives of the patient who comes with her and we know that he is a next of kin does he or she has a role in taking the decision or in giving a consent no well, the only role of next of kin to attend okay it uh, can be like a chaperone no problem uh, he can discuss with the patient uh, about different options okay but to give you consent no consent from the patient consent from the patient so consent from the patient not from her friends okay the next of kin has no rule in giving a consent we take consent from the patient herself okay what if uh, during uh, the surgery it was laparoscopic surgery and it was interesting case and we took some photographs to publish photographs you should need you should take a consent even if you want to publish these photos in a lecture you need written consent you need written consent and don't take photos with smartphones because with smartphones you can share it on facebook no 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 don't do that okay smartphones no because you may share it to social media no don't do that with camera okay camera okay but smartphones no okay so this should be under consent that you told her we took some photos are you uh, accepting that we uh, publish them into a lecture so students can learn okay doctor can you sign here thank you and they tell her nobody will know who you are we will not say your name okay what if we are in the clinic and the doctor will counsel a patient and there is a trainee like mti for example or trainee or a not mti um i don't remember the name it doesn't matter and clinical attachment and the clinical attachment the doctor is present he wants to attend the meeting to learn you should counsel the patient we have here dr ahmed he is a clinical attachment doctor and he will be happy to attend with us are you happy with this yes thank you examination under anesthesia written consent examination under anesthesia written consent very important okay to take a sample from suspected lesion intraoperative no problem you don't need consent for that no need for consent to take a sample from suspicious pathology but um, these samples for example tissue from a mass that was proved to be cancer can this slide be given to other people for research purposes for research purposes okay but we need consent we need consent we will tell her you this sample will be given to the pathology department in the college uh, to be studied by the histopathologists and nobody will know who you are okay doctor i accept please sign the consent okay examining the still purse what do you mean baby died in utero we want to know why this baby died the best thing to be done is post-mortem examination and the taking samples autopsy we need written consent you cannot take samples from the still purse it's a dead, a dead, a dead, a dead baby no problem we need consent we need consent written consent the only thing you can do without written consent in management of still purse is the placenta examining the placenta doesn't need consent but the baby we need written consent and we have steps according to a late entry prime fetal this green top guideline mainly consent is verbal but in some situations it must be written like management of still purse examining surgical techniques an instrument in the theater all this needs written consent if you didn't take consent don't do the technique otherwise it will be assault and the patient can make litigation against you 
who is competent. 18 and more is adult and competent. Less than this, jailic competency. Jailic competency. Who told you to consider 16, 17 having rights of adults? Who told you that? According to Family Law Reform Act. Kanun Aadit Tashkil Al-Usra. Family Law Reform Act. According to this act, we can give 16, 17 years old the rights of adults. Okay? It's called Family Law Reform Act. Below 16, check mental capacity, jail competency. Talking about contraception, talking about contraception and termination of pregnancy, abortion, it's a fraser. Okay, we have to take a break now. This conference will now be recorded. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> if your patient is competent, you can take consent from her. What if the patient is not competent now? For transient cause, for example, having hypoglycemic coma, okay, confused after trauma, for example, and you want to take a consent. If the condition is not, is not urgent, you can wait until the competency and the capacity improves. For example, you can treat hypoglycemic coma at first, then you can take the consent. Okay. What if there is no time for that? Okay. Open the files of the patient. Did the patient before give a comment which is recent and written about this procedure? What do you mean? For example, our patient is Jehovah's Witness, and we want to give her blood transfusion. She is comatosed now because of severe antepartum hemorrhage. Okay, and we cannot take consent from her. But when we opened her files, we found that uh, in her files it was written, I don't accept any blood transfusion whatever will be the outcome, even if this lead to this, and she signed. We will follow what she wrote, even if she will die. It's called advance directive. Advanced directive. Advanced directive. Another example, uh, old age woman with multiple comorbidity, she came to the hospital comatosed, or collapsed, or arrested. And it was written in her files, and she signed that, if I came uh, arrested, don't do resuscitation. OK, we will follow what she wrote. She wrote no resuscitations, so she will die. OK, we will follow what she wrote as long as it's recent and assigned by her. And similar to this scenario, what if we don't have advanced directive in her files? We can use what's called lasting the power of attorney, for example, I have a document that I am the lasting power of attorney of Mrs. X. So if she is not competent, I can give consent instead of her. And I have a contract which is written, recent, signed, witnessed, that I am the lasting power of attorney. I can give consent instead of her. What if all this is not available? Okay, you are a doctor. You know what is beneficial for her? Do what is beneficial for her. Her best interest, you can do it. So we use this sequence. Let's see it in the form of a flow chart. Your patient now, competent or not? Competent, they consent. Not competent, okay. You have advanced directive. Yes, it's written in the file, recent and designed and Written for similar situation like that. Use it. Not present. Is there lasting power of attorney? Mike's, please, Mike's, Dr. Ravisha, please, Mike's. Okay. Is there lasting power of attorney having a contract about similar situation? He can give consent? No? Okay. Best interest. You can do what is good and beneficial for your patients. If you are doing, uh, for example, a case with antepartum hemorrhage, I should give blood transfusion and I should give fluids. I should give ecopolics. What I didn't do this, 
you did negligence negligence what if a case with mild anemia i give i give her blood transfusion it's wrong management it's negligence so negligence can be by doing something not needed or not doing something that was needed it's negligence negligence we said that Fraser rule gave the children below 16 to ask for contraception and the even termination of pregnancy. Fraser, Lord Fraser said, he was a judge, Adi. He said that if the child is competent, understands what you say, you can take consent from her. Okay, but please advise her once if she can involve her parents into the decision. Only advise once, don't insist, don't persuade. No, 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 just advise once. Okay, okay. And these children, Lord Fraser gave them the right to ask for contraception because it's beneficial for this age. It will be a social problem if the child became pregnant and she is going to school and she's pregnant. It's something socially bad. So for their best interest, they can ask for contraception and termination of pregnancy but please advise them once to involve the parents into the decision making okay this is a screenshot i told you about it's from general medical council care quality commission care quality commission website cqc website care quality commission saying that fraser guideline originally related to contraception and the treatment, but following a case in 2006, it's now applied to decisions about sexual transmitted infections and the termination of pregnancy. So these children can ask for a portion according to Fraser guideline. Okay. So we finished what we need to say about uh, the consent and your consent to be valid, the patient should, as we said, to be competent. And you should not enforce the patient to choose something. The patient should have good mental capacity and inform it about option one, option two, option three. And what about of not doing any options? Any complications or not? Will I suffer or not? You should mention all this. Consent for surgery must be written. Okay, while counseling the patient about complications of a procedure, you should tell the patient the complications and the incidence of these complications in a simple way. You can use colloquial equivalent. What is colloquial? The patient will understand if you say 0.2%. What is 0.2%? Is it a big number or a small number? I am a patient, I don't know. That's why you should make it in a simple way. These questions, very easy, they come in the exam. Don't miss it in the exam. Okay, we have five grades. The middle one, uncommon. Then, common, then very common. To the negative side, rare and very rare. So, very common, common, uncommon. Rare, very rare, rare. Five grades. More than 10% is very common. From 1% to 10%, common. From 1 over 100, which is 1%, to 1 over 1,000, which is 0.1%, it's uncommon. From 1 over 1,000 to 1 over 10,000, rare. Less than 1 over 10,000, I forgot one zero here, it's a very rare. So, 1 over million, what is it? 1 over million. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. One over eleven thousand. 
That is also very rare. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. One over five thousand. What is the rare? Thank you. Rare. 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 Thank you. Rare. Rare. Because five thousand between one thousand and ten thousand. Five thousand. One over five thousand is rare. Okay. Twelve percent. Hmm. Very, common. Very, common. Very, common. Very common. Very common. Very common. Six percent. Common. 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 That's right. Okay. And to make it more simple for the patient, if it's something very common, tell her it's like one person among his family. So she understand it's a big number. One among a family. It's a big number. Okay. Common, a person in a street. Uh huh. So it's only common. Person in a village, uncommon. Person in small town, person in big town. So family, street, village, small town, big town. Very common, common, uncommon, rare, very rare. This slide is to be memorized by heart, by heart. Very important. It will solve a question in the exam. What happened in the case of Montgomery? Uh, this was a problem since many years ago. Okay, I think 16 to 20 years ago. When this woman, she was in labor, okay? Her baby was macrosomic, she was diabetic. She was not counseled about the risk of shoulder dystocia and the herbs palsy. Nobody told her that. That cesarean section can be helpful in your case because it can prevent having shoulder dystocia, herbs palsy and CB, cerebral palsy. She was not counseled about this. It was difficult delivery. Shoulder dystocia happened, the baby became cerebral palsy later on. The woman made a complaint and she, she gained at the end 5.25, so more than 5 million sterling pound. Why? They didn't tell her about the complications of vaginal delivery in her case. So in the exam, if a patient was not informed about complications of her procedure this is under montgomery rule you did a mistake according to montgomery rule because montgomery said the patient should be told about possible complications of her procedure that's why use the consent advice form published by the rcog you can get it easily from the rcog website Okay, consent advice for hysterectomy, for operative delivery, for cesarean section, for so and so. You have to get it and read it because the numbers in this consent advice come in the exam. Okay, let's talk about some parts of the UK law. UK law, the canon in UK. Like Canon Hemait El Bayonet, Data Protection Act. It was published in 1998, saying that any dealing with the patient, the details and the patient data should be lawful and protected by the Data Protection Act. Okay, it should be, the data should be accurate. The data should be up to date. And the data for any patient should be kept at least 10 years. What about obstetric cases? The problem in obstetric cases that uh, we may have a surprise that after five, six years, the baby is CB. Okay, or we can find another problem after many years of delivery of the baby. So the law said, keep obstetric files 25 years after delivery of last baby. Keep obstetric files 25 years after delivery of last baby. Take care. If this delivery was complicated, for example, shoulder dystocia, poor upper score, 
you need to keep the files more than 25 years. So even longer than 25 years. Why? They, make, they may make a complaint at any time. Okay. So obstetric files, at least 25. Okay. Data of children and young people, okay. Up to 25 years, okay. Uh, data about contraception, eight years, okay. If it was next planon or IUCD, 10 years, okay. Okay, generally, obstetric files, 25. Gynae can be less, eight years or 10 years. And in uh, pediatric files, okay, until age of 25. The question came before about uh, complicated delivery. How many years to keep the files? The answer, more than 25. Okay. Can I disclose information about the patient in some situations? If this is uh, helpful for the patient or helpful and beneficial for others, for example, your patient is having um, HIV. HIV. She is having a partner. You told her you need to involve your partner that you have HIV. So the partner can protect himself. No doctor. I will not tell my partner. If I, if I told him, he will leave me alone. He will not have sex with me. But it's the right of the partner to know, to protect himself. No doctor, I will not say. Hmm. What we do in this situation? To inform the partner or not? What do you think? Inform. We will inform. We will inform the partner. Inform the partner. You have to inform the partner. But at first, tell her. If you didn't tell him, we will tell him. Tell her yet that you will tell him before you do. And it's better that the patient herself tells the partner to protect himself. Okay. What if a person having psychological problem and may commit suicide at home? You have to tell the family, take care, he may commit suicide. Okay, there is a risk of death. Take care, he may uh, do harm to others. So you have to tell them. Okay, when you ask uh, your colleague participating in the management of this patient, you are taking his opinion, no problem. It's a disclosure, but for the benefit of the patient. Okay, the GMC said that, the sexual transmitted infections, which are serious, and the serious infectious diseases, serious infectious diseases, you can break confidentiality in these conditions. As we said, in HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, that others can be infected. You can tell others that you are the partner, yes, take care, your patient is having HIV. So you can protect yourself safe sex, and so on. Okay, what is freedom of information? Um, I need to have, uh, I am a journalist, for example. I need to have data about certain patient in a certain hospital because we hear that there is a big problem there with this patient. What can I do? I can do a request called freedom of information request. I can apply this request that I want certain data about this patient and I will say what are these data. This request will reach the trust office. The trust office has the right to say, okay, we accept giving you this, this data, or they can say, no, you don't have the right, or they can give limited access. And this reply should be within 20 days. Okay. Who can request information? Anybody. Not even in UK. Somebody outside UK can ask. Okay, you have the right to ask. And we have the right to accept or to reject. And you can apply this request to this email, England, contact us at NHS. And the office will reply either they accept to give you data or not. Okay, I made this screenshot from the GMC website. <coughs> talking about freedom of information. So, if a man wants data 
about uh, the last delivery of his wife. What we will tell him, please apply freedom of information request. They will reply to you within 20 days, either by accepting to give you data or not. Don't tell him no. Just tell him that you can make a request. Freedom of information that each organizations related to it to NHS, so hospitals, trusts in UK, they have a person called Caldicott Guardian. What is the meaning of Caldicott Guardian? It's somebody present in the hospital, can be the general manager, or can be somebody recommended by the general manager. This person, his main mission is to protect patient confidentiality. Frequent exam question. What is the duty of the Caldicott guardian to protect uh, data uh, of the patient confidentiality? This is the main mission of him, to protect patient confidentiality. He can make workshops, okay, he can say some rules, okay, he can do follow-up to confirm that data confidentiality is respected. This is Caldicott guardian. According to Child Protection Act, Qanun Hamayat al-Atfal, sex is not allowed below 13. Starting from 13, okay, it's not, um, it's not legal, but in the same time, it's not a crime, not a crime. So child, 14 years old, having sex with her friend, uh, 13 years old, no problem, no problem. But sex below 13, no. Or sex, if there is a large difference of age, they are talking about more than five years, okay, it's not allowed. And it should be avoided that adult having sex with a child. It should be avoided to avoid any problems. Okay. Another act, Kanun Akhar in UK, called Human Fertility Embryology Act. This is act regulating management of IVF, uh, IUI, okay, surrogacy, uh, donor, uh, semen donation, and so on, egg donation. They are regulated by Fertility Embryology Act. This is the mission of this act. One of our friends was asking about surrogacy. What is the meaning of surrogacy? It means we have a couple. Okay, they need to have a baby, but for a cause or another, okay, uh, pregnancy cannot happen. Okay, they can ask for another woman to be surrogate. She will be pregnant for them, for this couple. How the surrogate can be pregnant? We can take semen from the mean, from the male, and do IUI to her. It's called traditional surrog surrogacy traditional surrogacy, to do IUI to the surrogate. Or we can do IVF to her. How? If we have a couple, the couple male and the female, male and the female, male and the female, okay. And the woman is subfertile, whatever the cause, uh, BCO resistant to treatment. Okay. We can do IVF. Here is the embryo implanted into the surrogate. It's called full surrogacy. Full starts by F. You are doing IVF or egg report to the surrogate. So if you do IUI to the surrogate, it's straight for partial or traditional surrogacy. If you do IVF and transfer the embryo to the surrogate, it's called post or full surrogacy. We have uh, some uh, organizations, Gamayet, in UK, like Kutz, Childlessness Overcome Through Surrogacy. At Tagalub, Al Adam Al Kudra, Al Wugud Tufl, and Tari Surrogacy. Kutz, and we have another one called Surrogacy UK. It's another organization. These organizations, okay, they can facilitate. 
is the relation between the commissioning a couple and they can get surrogate women for them. These organizations can receive small fees, not large amount of money. Small fees, no problem, okay? Uh, to cover paperwork and so on. But large fees, no. Okay. In relation to IVF, how many IVF cycles a woman can get in UK? Maximum three cycles. If her age 40, 42, in some conditions, she can have one cycle. So total three. Who can get IVF? If there is unexplained subfertility two years, unexplained, they can have IVF. Or if they have um, uh, intratrine insemination, or they have artificial insemination. Artificial insemination can be intravaginal, can be intracervical, can be intratrine. If a couple had 12 cycles insemination, whatever, intravaginal, cervical, uh, intratrine, including six, at least, in tritrine, they can be offered IVF. How many cycles? Three cycles. Which one is more done? IVF or ICSI? IVF. ICSI, it has specific indications. So IVF, more done than ICSI. ICSI is done if there is very poor semen quality, azo or severe teratum, or they have previous IVF and the fields. They had IVF and the field before. Okay, they can be offered ICSI. Take care, not any IVF. IVF failed because no fertilization happened. Then we can do it by injection. If a woman who's age from 40 to 42, she didn't have any IVF before, she can be offered one cycle IVF. Provided that, number one, she didn't have any IVF before. Number two, her ovarian reserve is good. We need to pay money and to get benefit. Her ovarian reserve is good. Number three, she understands the complications of IVF and the complications of pregnancy at this age and the high risk of miscarriage at this age. In this situation, we can offer her one cycle IVF. Exit if severe uh, semen abnormality. So the rule is IVF, not exe. Exe has a specific. Don't choose exe in the exam, except if he said severe semen analysis abnormality. Okay. Or he said that she had before IVF and the no fertilization happened. This is the indication of X. Okay. You said maximum number of IVF cycles a woman can get whatever the age in UK is maximum, maximum three cycles. Age 40, 42 can have only one cycle. The question, how many embryos can be transferred? Okay. In the first cycle, you will, uh, if the woman under 37, single embryo. If this is her second cycle, we need single top quality embryo. One embryo. If there is no top quality embryo, there is no grade A embryos, okay, you can transfer to embryos, non-top quality. In the third cycle, always two embryos. Whatever the quality, this is her last chance, two embryos. Okay, 37, 39, single top or two non-top. Okay, the big one, top quality, the small non-top quality, to be easy. Okay, second cycle, same like in under 37, single top or two non-top. Third cycle, always, to embryos. A question came before in the exam. What is the indication to transfer double embryos? 
in the first cycle, IVF, and you will transfer even if to good quality, to top quality, if the age 40, 42. Exam question. If the age 40, 42, it's one cycle already, transfer double embryos. Okay, doctor, you told us that we need IVF. Thank you for saying that. But we have a question. Who will pay for this IVF? The NHS will pay or we will need to pay? You will tell them your data will be sent to the clinical commissioning group. This group is the one who will say if the NHS will pay or you will pay. Mostly if it's a case of uh, indicated IVF and they have optimum BMI and uh, usually in this situation NHS will pay. But if BMI is high, okay, or they had already three cycles before, they will pay for it. How much they will pay? About 5,000 sterling bound. But to remove the stress from yourself, tell the couples, your data will be sent to the clinical commissioning group. They are the party that will say if you will receive a uh, 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 fund or you will pay. Okay. We have an act about a portion. According to this act, a portion will be legal if it's under any one of these clauses. One clause A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So we have here five, and we have here two. F and G are separate because they need specific indication. Okay, what is the meaning of clause A, clause B, clause C, clause D, clause E? Then F and G. Clause A, if this abortion will prevent this, this, you are protecting life. If pregnancy continued, she will die, you can abort under category A. Like what? A case with uh, pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension, abortion under clause A. Clause B, if she will have organ damage, organ damage, for example, she has borderline renal function. If pregnancy continued, she will lose her kidney. It's category B. Category C, it's the commonest one. Most of abortions under clause C, social, social problems. Doctor, if this pregnancy continued, uh, my partner will leave me. If this pregnancy continued, uh, uh, my family will suffer. Doctor, I have MRCOG exams and I want to abort because I cannot able, I am not able to study. It's category C. Category D, kids. D, kid. Child, kid, kids. Doctor, I have a child who has Down syndrome. I am taking care of him. If this pregnancy continued, doctor, I will not be able to take care of my down child. Okay, abortion under clause D. Doctor, you did ultrasound to me and you told me that my baby in utero, okay, my baby has Down syndrome. Please, I want to terminate this pregnancy. So the EE embryo for the baby, the fetus. The fetus itself, it has major abnormality, which can be serious. The baby, uh, if continued, will live handicapped. Down syndrome, for example, uh, major anomaly, um, phallotetralogy, for example. Uh, the baby has Marfan syndrome. Okay, we can do a portion under close E. But take care. If the baby only having an extra digit, not serious, pregnancy can continue and abnormality can be treated. If the baby has isolated, Talibus equine virus, no problem, it can be corrected, even without surgery, but to be isolated, not with other chromosomal abnormalities. Okay, if like A, but in emergency, for example, 
a patient with cardiac disease and the coming with heart failure. It's urgent, urgent. If, if pregnancy continued a few days or even hours, she will die. G, okay, um, she has severe preeclampsia and uh, deteriorating renal function. Save the kidney. Under category G, do a portion. Okay. Dr. Osama, at which, which? age? Which? At which? Mm -hmm. At which? At which gestational age we can do a portion? We care for gestational age in only two clauses of these. Hmm. Somebody can tell me what are these two clauses that we will respect? The C, the social. The age. Hmm? C, C and the C and D and D. C and D. What would be the cutoff level of age? Gestational 24 age. 24 weeks. 24 weeks. 24, 24 weeks. 24 weeks. 24 weeks. So in C and the D, you have to respect the age. What do you mean? Don't do a portion according to C and the D if the age is more than 24 weeks. So 24 CD. 24 CD. You will respect the age of 24 weeks in C and D. So I can do a portion according to close A at 26 weeks. No problem, you can. But take care. If you will do a portion starting from 22 weeks, you need to kill the baby at first. How? inject potassium chloride intracardiac. So the baby will not suffer. And the baby will not need resuscitation. Okay? So, I need to do a portion for a woman at 23 weeks because of social and the family problems. Okay, we accept under close C, but inject potassium chloride intracardiac at first into the heart of the baby, not the mother. Okay, so the baby will not suffer. Okay, I think this is the last thing. Yes. Please, what is the difference between A and F? Both emergency, yes? F emergency. I will give you an example. The patient Hello. was... Hello. The patient was... Um, um, pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension. If pregnancy continued, she will die. But is it urgent? No, not urgent. But if the same case of pulmonary hypertension coming in heart failure, now it became urgent to abort. It was A and it became F. Clear? Sir, uh, one more question, please. Regarding this, um, this uh, termination of pregnancy, you said that uh, a patient who is having a uh, termination for social reasons can be up to 24 weeks. And if she is having uh, a, a, a fetus or a baby with some and major anomaly, we can go at any time termination. But if the anomaly is not major, she is having some minor anomaly which can be corrected, which does not need termination, but she still requests termination. So should we answer it as uh, refuse termination or it can be done under social causes C? Okay, if it's a serious handicap, if the baby is serious handicapped or will suffer from mental or physical abnormality, if the pregnancy continued, it's a category E. So Down syndrome, E. Phallotetralogy, E. Major anomalies, E. Anencephaly, E. Whatever the gestational age. What if the abnormality is not serious and the baby will not suffer physical or mental abnormality after delivery? Extra digit, it will be removed easily. So it's not under close E. To be close E, it should be something serious, serious handicapped, or will suffer from physical or mental abnormality. 
other than this second question, is it making social problem or not? Doctor, I know that my child is having minor abnormality, extra digit, no problem, doctor, but I have serious problems in my family. Okay, we cannot tolerate extra baby. If this pregnancy continued, my family will suffer. Okay, what is the gestational age? Less than 24. Okay, category C. More than 24, sorry, I cannot accept. Okay? Yeah, understood. Thank you. Okay. Sir, one more, one more Sir please. on the basis uh, of uh, all cases, uh, two doctors. Questions on WhatsApp. Questions on WhatsApp tomorrow, inshallah. On the all basis cases, of two doctors, sir. My friends, uh, we are now in slide 100. Okay, the last slide in the lecture today is number 300, 351. So we are just in the beginning of the lecture. We are just starting the lecture. Sir, on the basis of uh, gender discrimination, is it allowed, sir? Pardon? No gender on discrimination. The basis of gender. Don't do abortion because the age of the baby. No, don't do it. It's now gender discrimination. Don't do abortion because of the gender of the baby. No gender discrimination is accepted. Okay, sir. Don't abort because of gender discrimination. Okay. We don't accept gender discrimination in UK. Okay. Female genital mutilation. One second. Okay. Female genital mutilation in UK, it's a crime. It's a crime. Female genital mutilation is a crime. Don't do it. Don't assist in doing it. Don't even help the couple to travel outside UK to have mutilation. It's a crime. The parents should protect their female child of having this crime. So when you need to ask for the police and you will call the police, you have to call the police if you saw a girl under 18, so child, and she had mutilation. So mutilated child below 18, so there is a crime here happened. What is a crime? Child abuse. There is child abuse happened. It's a crime happened. You need to involve the police. Is it urgent? No, no, no. I need to involve police within one month. For example, a case coming in labor, she is 17 years old, she is in labor, she delivered a baby, okay? And she was mutilated. Involve police now, she has just delivered today. You will call police today? No, 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 within one month, not urgent, not urgent. Okay, so mutilation below 18, you should involve police, not urgent, within one month, okay? Don't assist, don't accept, don't do it because it's a crime to do mutilation. We have four types of mutilation. Number one, to excise the clitoris. We have the clitoris, labia majora, and labia majora. Okay. If you excise the clitoris, it's type one. If you excise labia majora, labia minora, it's type two. If you excise the labia and you did fusion between them in the midline, it's called infipulation, type three. Infipulation, type three. To do excision and diffusion in the midline. It will be like a wall <laughs> outside, like transverse septum. It's infibulation type three. If just you do cutting, okay, apply ring, okay, it's type four. Tattooing, you know, 
that domain no problem so cutting uh, applying a ring it's type 4 type 1 clitoris type 2 clitoris plus labia minora or majora type 3 infibulation the most dangerous one this septum will be as an obstacle for delivery and for having sex and it has many complications increasing risk of uti sexual dysfunction and even complications during delivery okay if you see a patient uh, mutilated below 18 years old bolus within one month if you have a case for example antenatal care a woman more than 18 and she is mutilated record in her files that she is mutilated and it's better to take photographs and the both photographs for the mutilation okay to be an evidence that she is mutilated and this is the appearance and the type of mutilation if a woman delivered a female child ah uh, the woman is mutilated she may do mutilation to the child after delivery so from the scenario and from the history we have two scenarios either this woman is not willing to mutilate the child to inform social services or you think this woman is going to mutilate the child she said frankly i am going to mutilate my child involve police involve police and in all scenarios if the mother is mutilated you will write in the red book of the child that the mother is mutilated okay whatever boy or girl you need to write document that the mother is mutilated okay uh, female genital mutilation um, antenatal care any extra precautions yes number one Usually, mutilation is done by non-medical professionals, so more risk of infection. So, she may have hepatitis C. Screening for hepatitis C is not routine during pregnancy. But in patients with mutilation, it's routine to screen for hepatitis C. In addition to hepatitis B, HIV. Okay? Okay. So, number one, we will screen for hepatitis C. In addition to routine B, C, HIV, and syphilis. Sorry, in addition to B, HIV, syphilis. So, in these people, you will screen for hepatitis C, which is not routine in other people. Number two, if there is infibulation, so there is transverse septum caused by fusion in the midline of the libya after excision, you need to counsel about opening and cutting this infibulation. It's called defibulation. This defibulation can be done at multiple times. At, it can be done before the first sexual intercourse. Doctor, uh, I had mutilation type three. I want to start my sexual life. I want to remove the septum. Go on, let's excise it. Or before pregnancy. Or in the second trimester, the best time in pregnancy around 20 weeks. So avoiding first and third trimester. Okay. If the woman is in labor, in the first stage of labor, you can excise it using using what scalpel and scissors, mass or mushroom. Okay. What if we are in the second stage? Of labor and we are about to have crowning scissor only why don't use a scalpel you will cut the head of the baby in the first stage okay you can use scissor or a scalpel but in second stage scissor so you are securing the head of the baby the questions in the exam he may give you the following options a patient uh during uh she is uh in labor okay and we are now in um the second stage of labor before crowning and he gave you two options to use scissor 
doctor to use a scalpel. I will use scissor. Scalpel may injure the baby, but scissor, you are securing the baby. Okay, what if the patient is delivered by CS? After cesarean section, you can offer doing this de-infibulation. Take care. If the woman asked you, doctor, please close again the septum for me. It's something in our traditions, and I did it to allow the vaginal delivery, but please, after delivery, close it again. No, it's a crime. I cannot do it. One of the four ethics of pillar, not to do harm. This is a harm. I cannot do it to you. But doctor, there is bleeding. There is bleeding from a certain point. I will repair the bleeding. I will do hemostasis. But to do re-infibulation, no, it's a crime. No, don't accept re-infibulation. It's a crime. OK. What is the meaning of female genital cosmetic surgery? That there is um, abnormality. Uh, there is um, anomaly, anomaly in the genitalia. You need to correct. The best time is after 18 years old, until the external genitalia takes its full maturity and they become mature enough. Okay. What if a woman, for example, she is having clitoromegaly? Clitoromegaly. We want to treat it. It's abnormality. It's abnormality. Okay, we need to treat it um, because it's a, it's a problem. It's anomaly. Okay, NHS can pay for this. NHS can pay for this. What if a woman uh, just wants to correct something only for cosmetic purposes? Just uh, she has a regular labia she wants to correct. Okay, NHS will not pay if the aim is cosmetic. But if the aim is therapeutic, okay, cosmetic, no, they will not pay. NHS will not pay for this. Okay, so any mutilated women, tell her what you had is something against the law, and you have to protect your children. You should not do it. And do we need to document this? And do we need to involve you inside the national statistics? Doctor. You mean that you will tell uh, people about me? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. We will just document your name, but your name will not be published. So in the national statistics, your name will not be mentioned. So doctor, why you are saying my name to them? Just to avoid publication, because I documented you today, and I sent your data to the social services. Maybe after time, you will see another doctor. He will also document your data, and data will be referred to social services. You will be doubled in this situation. You will be counted as two people. We will write your name to avoid duplication. If you mask somebody, you are doing anonymization, anonymous. If you are not masking, it's now without anonymization. When you mention the name, it's now without anonymization. So anonymous, not anonymous. What we do here is no anonymization or without anonymization. Important. They love this point in the exam. Will you mention the name or not? Yes, I will send the data containing the name of the patient to avoid duplication. Police, if mutilation under 18 or the mother delivered the baby, and frankly, she said she wants to mutilate the baby. Here involve police. She wants to do a crime. Okay. We talked before about Montgomery case and the Montgomery rule. You should tell your patient about complications of, of the procedure, and you should tell your patient the different options, pros and cons. Otherwise, you did negligence according to Montgomery rule. Before Montgomery rule, before this woman receives five million sterling bound compensations, there was another rule called the BOLAM. In BOLAM, you don't need to tell the patient about the complications and about different options. You are a doctor, you know what's right, do it. This is according to BOLAM. 
but now we use Montgomery. Now we use Montgomery. So we use now Montgomery. Okay. We talked today about litigations in obstetrics. The commonest cause, birth hypoxia. Okay, what was the cause in these cases? Number one, doctors were unable to read CTG. Cause number two, doctors, they read CTG well, and they know it's abnormal, but they didn't take an action. Or they took an action, but late. You see how decision-making is important? Number three, both of them. They love this point in the exam. Number one, inability to read CTG. Number two, read but uh, uh, late decision or no decision was taken, or both of them. They love this point. Okay. Let's see this question. 30 year old, bar five, 36, brought by ambulance, abdominal pain, heavy bleeding, tachycardia, pressure okay, respiration tachypnea, oxygen saturation okay, in room air, temperature okay, not feverish, placenta was anterior high, on examination, abdomen tender, and there is tachycardia, don't forget. CTG recording is abnormal. What do you think? Abdominal pain, heavy bleeding, That's abnormal CTG. Accidental. Abnormal. Okay, it can be accidental, it can be rupture uterus. Okay, let's see what is it. Um, CTG abnormal. In this situation, you need cesarean section. But the woman does not understand or speak English. But her sister speaks English. We did the resuscitation and we are counseling now about emergency cesarean section. But the patient does not understand English. What you will do? You will go for cesarean section directly or you will ask her sister to be interpreter to her or you need professional interpreter which can be can be available on phone when you okay they are available 24 by 7. professional interpreter or you can ask any uh, hospital um, uh, employee to come to interpret he is not interpreter but for example he understands uh, indian and the patient is indian okay please come interpret for us because we know that you know some indian uh, come please to interpret what do you think or professional interpreter from a relative. What do you think? Read the options. It should be a professional interpreter. Read the options silently and say the letter of the answer you think. C. 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 E. 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 C. E. C. E. 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 C. E. Okay. Doctors, doctors who say E, please imagine the situation well. You have a patient sitting in front of you. She needs cesarean section. He is sitting in front of you. You imagine what is E? What is E? You will say, workers, please take this woman to the theater. This is E. This is E. Can you do so? Please carry this woman to the theater. Let's take her to open her abdomen. Imagine E. If you are in the hospital, you will do E. Workers, no. please uh, take this woman to the theater. This is E. Who will do E? Who will do E? Yes. E. You will do E? Yes. How? No. You no, this e? is not allowed. No, no. The woman, is, the woman is sitting in front of you. She doesn't understand you. She will, she will find herself taken by people to the theater? No, of course no. 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 Is it human? 
Yes. She is conscious. She is conscious, but she doesn't understand English. So if I am Egyptian, Egyptian patient in UK, she doesn't understand English. They will carry her to the theater? No. So what do you think? Professional they can call by telephone. We said E is not logic. Because I cannot take her to the hospital, to, to the theater. The woman is conscious, my friends. She is conscious. She is not comatosed. If comatosed, okay. Comatosed, okay, take her to the theater. No problem. She is already comatosed. She is alert, but she doesn't understand English. Okay. Uh, can we call one employee, please, please, please? Do you understand the uh, Indian? Yes, some. Okay, please come. Interpret for this patient. Is it logic? No. No. Maybe exactly what I. Not logic. Okay. A family please, member please. will sign the consent. Mm. Hmm. What do you think? No. You understand English? Yes. No, no. <laughs> Is it logic? No, he has no okay. right. He is not logic. Okay, B. Accepted uh, to obtain consent with the help of family member or friend who speak language. Okay, so I will counsel with her sister. Uh, please, your sister needs a cesarean section. Uh, please sign for us here. Logic? Logic? No. No, as I told you, I must hear we, from have, her. we have professional interpreters available 24 by 7 on phone with all languages, all languages. You will call a specific number, the interpreter, yes, please, I want to tell the patient so and so, and he will tell her on phone that you need emergency cesarean section. C is the answer. C is the answer. Okay. Uh, this is a question from one of the books. I think the answer in the book was not C, but do you think anything other than C? Okay, I don't know what, what book is it, but the only logic answer here is C. And as I told you, doctors who work in UK, they know that there is interpreter in all languages available on phone 24 by seven. Somebody working in UK? Nobody? Okay. Patient in labor, two centimeter dilatation, baby distressed, the woman refusing cesarean section at all. What do you think? B. Autonomy. Autonomy. Is B. B. Except women wishes. Except women. D. Autonomy. D. Autonomy. Hmm. So, the so legal court ordered let's imagine the scenario let's imagine the scenario let's imagine the, let's imagine the, the scenario hello mrs x i am dr osama uh, we had uh, the heart trace for your baby and unfortunately the baby is not happy and we don't want cesarean and we need cesarean section to save the baby no doctor i don't accept why? Because so and so. We told her it's beneficial, pros and cons, so and so. Doctor, no, 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 I don't want cesarean section, please. I want to continue vaginal delivery. Okay, please stay as you are. Hello, court. We have a patient refusing cesarean section and uh, it's important for her. Okay, thank you. We will carry her to the theater. What do you think? <laughs> Is it logic? No, no, not no, not a. Not logic. Answer is A. The answer is A. 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 Counsel by another door, another counsel. No, it is D. 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 Are you as a doctor? D. Are you as a doctor not competent enough? No right. You have to counsel another You cannot counsel a patient. Did you fail to counsel her? No, no. You cannot counsel her. I can counsel her and accept her. 
We, we, we he has no right. Counselor, don't counsel her from the start. We should not exercise on particular decision. Don't counsel from the start. Ask another body to counsel her. If you cannot counsel her. Yes. You are not able. Ask somebody else. Except the woman wishes. What happens? Okay. Here, here, uh, Dr. Osama, we have to apply the autonomy. So the patient has the right to refuse the cesarean section, right. whatsoever the cause. According to autonomy, you will accept her wishes. Accept her wishes. But, doctor, yes. we have pathological CTG. The baby will die. No problem. We accept her wishes. The baby in utero has no rights. Once born, he has all the rights. So if this case is HIV and after delivery, she is refusing that the baby receives postpartum antiviral prophylaxis. I don't care for her consent. I will give the baby the antiviral prophylaxis, zidovudine or combination, whatever. But she's refusing. I don't care. The baby after delivery has all the rights. According to Child Protection Act, I have to protect this baby. But in trine, maternal consent is number one. Okay, what happens in uh, part three exam? Okay, you may find one of the scenarios you are counseling the case about cesarean section. You give her pros and cons. Okay, she accepted okay, she refused okay. As long as you did good counseling. That's why you should be competent doctor. So accept her wishes. No need to ask another consultant. And if with another consultant, she's still refusing, let's ask a third consultant. And let's ask a fourth consultant. No, 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 you are competent. I watch the pillar and thanks for the doctor who said before I ask, autonomy, autonomy. Okay, what is the still birth rate at 43 weeks? We expect it to be a high number. It's yes. post date. Hmm. And this is the evidence. Yes. Why to offer induction of labor, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, the still birth rate is one in 1,000 at 37. And it becomes three in 1,000 at 42 weeks. And increases to six in 1,000 at 43. So six in 1,000. Which answer here works with six in 1,000? Eight. Closer. That's right. That's right. Eight is right. Don't say a smaller number. Okay. In the complications, you can say a slightly bigger number, no problem. But don't say don't say a smaller number. If you say smaller number, you are deceiving the patient. Deceiving the patient. Okay. And other question. Mm -hmm. uh, according, uh, the patient attended for laparoscopic tubal occlusion, but she had not yet signed a consent. But she was counseled. She was counseled. Good counseling about alternatives, risk, benefits, and she was this counseled very well. The only missing thing, she didn't sign the consent. No problem, she can sign it in the same day of procedure. No problem, but she was counseled well. So, mm, what will be your answer? She was counseled about pros, cons, benefits, and she had time to decide, uh, counseled about alternatives. Wow, very good. No problem, she can sign now. What do you think? What do you think? And Proceed. How we can yeah, call this consent? Informed. I think this is informed consent. Informed consent. And proceed. And to proceed. Right. It's informed consent. She was yes. informed about 
options about pros, cons, complications. She had time to think. Okay, only what's missed is signature. Okay, she can sign. As long as she had enough time to think. No problem. Don't tell now and take a signature now and in the same time go to the theater. No, no, no. She had enough time. Okay, it's informed consent. She received all needed data and she had time to think. Very good. Very good. Okay, so informed consent. Number two, take care for something we said if you didn't counsel the patient about the complications of the procedure. You are breaking the Montgomery rule. The same with the patient who is not informed about risk of shoulder dystocia and CB and herbs palsy and CB happened. It's a Montgomery rule. Okay, let's see question number two. Uh, the patient post operative developed complication and she said I was not informed about the risk. The doctor says uh, that uh, the risks are normally not discussed. Are you kidding me? Not discussed Bola, according Bola, to the standard Bola. of the practice in the unit. Which unit doesn't counsel about complications? Bola, Do you believe this doctor? Bola. Do you believe him? Bola. Do you believe Bola. him? Can we say Bola. that in our unit, we don't tell the patient about the complications? What this doctor did is right or wrong? Wrong. 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 According to which rule? Montgomery. 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 So what happened here is wrong and it should not be done like this. Here Montgomery rule was broken. So the answer is Montgomery. H. 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 Okay, H. here Montgomery rule was broken. And here, if this woman made a complaint, she will get five million sterling bound compensations. Not a must to be five million, but. Sir, please explain second example. again, sir. Second, why Montgomery? Montgomery, if you didn't counsel the patient about complications of the procedure and the procedure uh, and the complications happened, you broke Montgomery rule. If she made a complaint, but, she will gain compensations. Sir, but the risk are but not the normally is Bolam, discussed, sir? no, sir. Yes. Is hmm? it not Bolam? So it should be Bolam. No, my friends. Bolam was used before Montgomery case. After Montgomery case, we use Montgomery. So nowhere we can use that now, Bolam, sir. If a doctor told you now we use Bolam rule. Tell him, are you sleeping? You don't know that there is a rule called the Montgomery. Are you going to cost NHS another five million still in bounds? You broke Montgomery rule. The doctor here is wrong. It's not an excuse. And what does it mean that we don't discuss uh, in our unit uh, the risks? It's a crime. It's a crime. It's not valid consent. How you do a, an operation without counseling the patient about uh, the complications? Mm -hmm. If you say Bolam rule, so you are saying that this doctor did the right thing. This doctor did the right thing? No. This doctor did a crime, negligence, according to Montgomery rule. Okay. Question number three. Forceps, uh, 3.9 kilogram baby, shoulder dystocia, herpes palsy. The mother said um, uh, nobody told her about that herpes palsy can happen. Hmm. What do you think? Montgomery. Montgomery. Also Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah. Montgomery. Montgomery case itself. <laughs> this is what happened in Montgomery case. Yes. Again, here it's another break to Montgomery rule. I think in the exam there must be a question that it's answer Montgomery rule. They want everybody to hear about Montgomery case. 
It was about, I think it was in 2017, in, uh, no, 2016, I think. Okay, they want all doctors to know the rule. They want all doctors to tell the complications to the patient to avoid, again, losing compensation. Okay, hysterectomy for 43-year-old woman, uh, bleeding more than usual, she complained that. I was counseled about the operation, but nobody told me that I may need blood transfusion. If they told me, I would refuse surgery. Huh. Did they tell her about the complications? No, they didn't. They broke which rule? Montgomery. Montgomery again. Montgomery again. So please be strict. be strict to the consent advice. Tell the patient about complications. Otherwise, you are breaking the Montgomery rule. Don't say I am following Bolam. My friend, Bolam was before Montgomery. Bolam was before Montgomery. You have to tell the patient about the complications. You know, if you tell the patient about the complication and the complications happened, according to Bolam, you are not mistaken. So I told the patient that there is a risk of infection and the infection happened. According to Bolam, you are not mistaken. You got this point? Bolam says, if you are a good doctor and you did uh, the procedure in the right way to the patient, and in spite of this, complications happened, no problem. But the care, according to Montgomery, you should tell what are the complications. We know that complications can happen, but you have to counsel about them before the procedure because the patient has the right to accept or to refuse the procedure. This question from Konji Bok. Konji Bok. If you want to read more about the justification of the answer, but it's a very logic, very logic. In the exam, my friends, don't be shy to use the same answer more than once. But before doing so, double check, double check for doing so. If you are sure, do it. Okay, a portion Situation clause. for that answer. Hmm? Sir, is, is there any uh, situations or uh, circumstances we can answer as uh, Bolam, sir? No. What I have just said. Okay, if you counsel the patient about that you may need blood transfusion. After the procedure, she needed blood transfusion and we gave her, her blood transfusion. Here complications happen that she lost the blood and she needed blood. Here you are protected by Bolam. But you counsel her. Here you didn't break Montgomery here because you told her about the complications before they happen. Okay? A portion sir, there is, sir uh, there is no compensation for uh, breaking the Bolam rule. There is no compensation for the doctor. It's only for the Montagmary. To break Bolam, how to break Bolam? Bolam protects you. How to break it? Bolam says if complications happen, okay. Okay. Thank okay, you. you are protected. But you should tell her about the complications according to Montgomery. So what we do now? It's a combination between Bulam and Montgomery. How? Tell the patient about the complications before the procedure. She has the right to accept or refuse. If complications happened, no problem. You told her about, the, about, about it? Yes. Before the procedure? Yes. Thank you. You didn't break Montgomery. You are now protected by Bulam. And then it will all, all the complications, either major, minor, like uh, very rare. We have to tell all the Use complications. The Use the right. consent advice. You have ready made performa for the consent. Use the consent advice. Okay. Uh, excuse me, sir. And there the is one modification of Bolam also now. Hmm? Belief is modification of Bolam. Like what exactly it is? Bolam says, 
if you are a good doctor following the guidelines and you did a procedure and the complications happened you are protected so i told the patient that uh, infection may happen and the infection happened no problem i am protected by bola i told her about the complication and i told her it can happen no problem there was a question in the exam you know that for most of the procedures we tell the patient about the risk of infection but are you going to say uh, infection you may develop infection by staph aureus you may develop infection by strept uh, biogenes we don't say so <laughs> so she cannot make a complaint that i developed infection by marsa mm -hmm. and they didn't tell me i may develop infection by marsa they told you infection yes bolam you got it because there yes, was a sir. question about a woman who developed necrotizing fasciitis the doctors counseled her about infection bolam no mistake bolam as long as you counseled about infection not a master to say infection by staff by strep by uh, 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 organism so and so infection superficial it can be deep we don't say these extensive details even in the consent advice infection okay let's see the scenario at first we need we need to know here there is an indication to abort or not and if there is indication to abort second question which clause 22 year old last period eight weeks she stopped taking bills she became pregnant but uh, there is a party for her sister and she will be a bridesmaid in arabic they say wasiyat al arusa okay <laughs> no problem okay she will be uh, the bridesmaid in three months and she is worried that how to be a bridesmaid and your abdomen like this number one is no indication accepted hmm? See, no, 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 bleeding blood transfusion trauma to the uterus trauma to the cervix okay uh, and there is a small risk of this uh, yes doctor but uh, you know the dress will not suit me and i will be uh, is it accepted risk benefit no no refuse no. 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 it's no no indication on social it's not an indication. It's not an indication. Not an indication. Not an indication. A doctor who is Catholic and uh, he is strict to his religion. And in Catholic, they don't allow a portion. Okay? A patient came to him, she is asking for a portion but you know he is strict to the religion what he can do here are the options send it to another colleague excellent refer to another one. excellent refer to another colleague okay. to another catholic will refuse the procedure send to another colleague another body okay. another non catholic who accepts doing it okay uh, can i tell her uh, no, I am Catholic. I don't accept abortion because it's forbidden. You are doing something bad. How to kill your baby? I will refer you to another doctor. Can I do this? No, no. Of course not. No. Without saying the cause, refer to another person. 
Okay, Be don't tell her my conscience is preventing me from doing such a crime. Don't do so. Tell her, okay, but I will refer you to another doctor to help you. Finished. Okay, so don't don't say don't tell the reason. Don't tell I am Muslim. I don't do abortion. It's haram. No, don't do so. Just refer. Okay. Um, a patient uh, after delivery. So for any get... abortion. What? Sorry, for any abortion, we need consent from for uh, doing any abortion. We need consent from two doctors compulsorily. No, so for following any clause. In A B C D E. A B C D E. You need consent from two doctors. Saying that it's legable to be abortion under clause A, for example. If and G, it's an emergency. Only one doctor is enough because it's emergency. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Baby delivered after delivery. The baby is acidotic. BH seven point one. This is acidosis. Abgar Abgar score is bad. Three. Okay. And the mother is okay, but as you see, it's not straightforward delivery. How many years to keep the files? 25 more than 25 more than 25 more than 25 it's not yeah. straightforward it's complicated delivery more than 25 according to mebrasi report why women with preeclampsia die intracranial intracranial hemorrhage b b b intracranial hemorrhage Followed mm -hmm. by liver pathology. Followed by liver pathology. So intracranial hemorrhage is the cause of this, according to Mebrasi report. Okay. Mm, uh, Thirty-four year old elective cesarean section. She had two sections before. Delivered the baby, but the placenta is adherent. Retain the placenta. Bleeding. Received Skin general nature. anesthesia. Bleeding continues. We need hysterectomy because hemoglobin became three gram per deciliter. But she is Jehovah's Witness. <coughs> and she signed advanced directive, no blood to be given to me. Hmm. Will you give blood or not? Give no. 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 Give blood. Hmm. Give blood. No blood. No blood. No blood. No blood. No blood. No blood. But she will die. Autonomy. No blood. Autonomy. No blood. Autonomy. No blood. Respect autonomy. Respect no autonomy. Advanced directive. Have advanced uh, no directive. No. Have advanced directive. Excellent. Okay. Uh, it's about the cause of this, according to Miprasi. A lady was murdered by her husband and she was pregnant. Coincidental. Yes, coincidental. 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 Is coincidental. The cause here is not related to, to the pregnancy. He won't kill her, whatever she is pregnant or not. I think she was annoying to him. Okay, so it's not related to the pregnancy. It's coincidental, not direct, not indirect. It's coincidental. Number two, a lady 14 weeks, surgical miscarriage. After two days, she died. The cause of this? Uh, cardiac indirect. 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 Hmm. indirect. 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 Hmm. Cardiac disease. Early in diet. Early in diet. In diet. Notice, we don't say early. Only in diet. We don't say early. We don't have early. We have either maternal death, pregnancy, and six weeks postpartum. And we have late from six weeks to one year. 
We don't have early. It's maternal. So maternal and direct this. Induction of labor, preeclampsia, very high pressure. Direct maternal. Direct. Early direct. And this one early. Goodie, goodie, goodie. Hmm. Should I die from communication? Somebody killed her. What is the main responsibility of Caldicott Guardian? Protection, and protection, protection and confidentiality. And Very and frequent and exam question. Hmm. Okay. A obese woman delivered a baby with herpes palsy. She is showing that she was not told about the risk. It's the case of Montgomery. They love it in the exam. Okay, because you cannot be a doctor in UK without knowing Montgomery case. Five million sterling bound. Very huge numbers. It's irritating to them very much. That's why they ask about it. Okay. Mm. It's an EMQ from the schools, 65, total hysterectomy, right ovarian cyst, suggestive of their mind. Okay, um, so what do you think about this cyst? This cyst? You are doing total hysterectomy without bilateral salvage of rectomy, but you find the dermoid. Treat the dermoid or not to treat the dermoid? No, no a, not to treat. Do as consent. I will do hysterectomy or not? Yes. Yes, you will do hysterectomy, but you will not Sir, remove. I will do hysterectomy. Do hysterectomy, but don't touch the ovaries. Don't touch the dermoid. It's not life threatening. If it looks suspicious, take a biopsy. Okay, second scenario. Uh, I found at the next year mass during removal of the gallbladder. Okay, and we found at the next year mass. Hmm. Do abandon. Abandon. Take biopsy only. Not as the scenario. D. Please, in the exact Take imagine. Let's imagine the scenario. Who is doing the surgery? Take biopsy. Surgeon. Who is doing the surgery? Surgeon. Abandon the procedure. General surgeon. Then the general surgeon called you. Please come. I found a, a, a ovarian mass, a mixed mass. What will you tell him? Do it consented because she has not not been taken. You will tell him. You will tell him. Did, she, did you have any consent for management of a pelvic mass? No. The consent was for cholecystectomy only. Thank you. Salam Please explain the first scenario again, sir. Why not the second scenario? I will not interfere. I will not interfere. So abandon the procedure. Abandon means don't interfere. Don't interfere. While, what about the general, the, the surgeon himself? He will proceed as consented. But for me, abandon the procedure. Not my case. I will not. Sir, uh, of first. Sir, please explain first scenario again, sir. Sir, why not do and consent? Why not as consented? First one, you are planning to do total hysterectomy without not mentioned that you consented for bilateral salvage of rectomy. 
it's heavy menstrual bleeding, so just remove the bleed itself without removal of the ovaries. You find ovarian cysts suspected to be dermoid. Okay, no problem. Don't touch. Why to remove it? After the procedure, you will tell her intraoperative, we found a mass suspected to be dermoid. We can investigate it more to see if we need surgery or not. Not any dermoid will need surgery. Okay. Sir, uh, in second case, why we should not take biopsy? We can take biopsy in second case. Did he tell you that the mass is suspicious? No, here, sir, here, Sorry. if the, if if there is a do as consented option, why don't we opt for that? Because we are not doing anything. We are doing whatever is consented only. Don't do something without consent. The only thing you can do is to manage a topic, even without previous consent. If found sir, accidentally. No, 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 I mean, I mean. Take biopsy if in mass, he told you, it to be cancer. So do as consented option means whatever has been taken a consent, that procedure has to be done. So here they have taken a consent for cholecystectomy. Why can't we go for do as consented? Let them go for cholecystectomy. We are not going to okay. do anything with the initial mass. Okay. The question here asking about you, what you are going to do as a gynecologist. Did you take consent for anything? Is it your case even? No, this is not my case. So, as a gynecologist, I will not interfere. But if the question is asking about what the surgeon will done, the surgeon will do consent, uh, do as consented. Yes, yes. He will do as consented for you, not interfere. Okay. You yes. got it? Okay. Usama, sorry, just for my knowledge, if the patient was taken for exploration, so if I find anything I can take, yeah, I, mean, I can take it, for example, if she came with acute abdomen and we cannot uh, localize what is the region, so we talk here, uh, exploration. So in this case, we can, uh, whatever I found that our suspect, the cause I can remove or? Look, before exploration, you should tell her, if we find if we find a lesion, we are going to treat it. For example, you have a chronic pelvic pain, so it can be endometriosis. We can treat it by doing so and so. Okay, it can be problem in the bladder, so we can do so and so. We can do so and so. Okay, for example, if this is a case of chronic pelvic pain, and you found ovarian mass. And you didn't counsel her about possibility of the need to surgery in the ovaries. Don't remove the ovaries. Okay? Imagine that you removed the ovaries. She will sue you. She will make a complaint against you. He removed the ovaries and he didn't counsel me about the need for removal of the ovaries. Protect yourself. The NHS doesn't want the doctors to cost her compensations. Be in the safe side. Okay. <clears throat> this scenario. Sir, sir, sir during the ectopic pregnancy, there was a ectopic. On what subliter? On what subliter? Okay. Sir, in case of ectopic pregnancy. Patient are not giving consent, but remove patient fit only for surgical. Then uh, we can do remove it or not, sir? Remove the ectopic, and you are protected by the law in this. Remove the, the ectopic. patient is stable. But patient in my opinion, is don't remove that tube. Remove the ectopic itself. She will not tell you why you removed my ectopic. I want my ectopic. She will not do this. But don't remove the tube. You can do salvinjostomy. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. And she sir, will during cholecystectomy. Why, why you take? She will not say. No this. more questions, please. No more questions. The benefit of all these regulations to decrease litigations. 
and to have good satisfaction from the patients. Okay. Severe bleeding, 32 year old, learning disability. Mm, so you IQ can be subnormal. Brought by relatives, again suspecting something in the, in the IQ, and she needs hysterectomy. Who will give you consent? Court. 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 You are right. Court. Yes. Including sterilization. 18 year old seen by consultant Gaini, and there is medical student as a clinical attachment wants to attend the meeting. Verbal consent. Hmm. Reading. Verbal. 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 Verbal consent. Verbal. Uh, please, uh, can you see that Dr. M will attend with us the meeting? He is a clinical attachment doctor. OK, no problem. No need to give uh, 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 written consent. No need. He will not do something. He will just attend. So verbal is enough. What about if the doctor will examine the patient under general anesthesia? Written consent. Written consent. Written consent. If examination under anesthesia. Okay. I will tell you the summary of this question. It's about a child, a child who is 15 years old. She is coming with her mother and with another man. This man is married to his mother, to, to the mother. Okay and she needs surgery. The girl is competent. So who will give you the consent? The girl or the, the mother girl or the mother's partner? The girl. 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 Only patient's birth mother can sign the consent form. D. 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 Who will sign the patient? Herself? Patient signature. He's competent. He's competent. So D is the answer. The patient is competent. She can give consent. Okay. Which one of the following? The formulas. Which one of them is not D, one of the D. four bellers? C. E. Obligation to avoid causing the heart. is one of the bellers. D, D. Manifestance is one of the bellers. C, C. Just equality, C. one of the bellers. Autonomy, one of the bellers. Obligation to avoid harm, it's not C. one of the others. What is the meaning of C that uh, you should never have harm? We are doctors. <coughs> harm will happen, but not intended. Complications that can happen. Side effects of medications that can happen, but not intended. So don't tell me. Uh, you are going to be a doctor harm free. How? I do surgery. I prescribe medications. C is not one of the pillars. Okay. Okay, so C is the answer, and these are the four pillars. Okay. Again, this question about the pillars. Patient with Down syndrome. Heavy bleeding affecting quality of life. And we want to apply myrina to the daughter you discuss with the mother 
from the patient about my rena prosanduconus. Hmm. Hmm. Beneficence. 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 B, 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 B. The patient has Down syndrome. Who will give you consent to apply? Mother Marina. can give. Mother. Perception. The mother. Me. The mother. Mother. That's right. Me. When you take consent from the mother. G. What is this? Order. Paternal order. Paternal consent. That's right. D. I will take consent from the parents. Here the mother is present. So D is the answer. Why, Dr. Osama? Because some Down syndrome, they have competence. They can sign for themselves. We need to apply he here. To say, he didn't say that that, that child is competent. <laughs> what is veracity, sir? What is veracity? What is C? It's not related. Mm -hmm. uh, veracity means uh, um, honest, means true, which is not present here. Okay. Number two. Okay, so okay. IGR, abnormal okay, CTG, okay. we need cesarean section. The mm -hmm. patient is receiving mm -hmm. cesarean. Autonomy. So we need to have spontaneous delivery. Autonomy. 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 But the e. baby will die. E. The baby will die. E. E. Autonomy. 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 We respect the patient's decision. Pregnancy. E, 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 sir, e. She wants induction at 36 weeks because her partner will travel. She wants to have induction non, of non, labor at 36. Non-manifestance. Non-manifestance. Non non Non-manifestance. It will do harm. It will do harm. We don't accept doing harm. Non manifestance. Non something wrong. We don't accept induction at 36. So there is no indication to induce here. So non manifestance. Okay, we solved this one before. We accept uh, the patient decision, even if the baby will suffer. Okay, so we will accept her wishes. Okay, it's a question from statistics about the variable. We know we classify variable into quantitative and qualitative. Numbers and not numbers. Quantity can be continuous, can be discrete. And continuous can be rate and it can be ratio. Ratio is more common. Quality can be binary, right? True, false, yes, no. And can be ordinal and it can be nominal. Nominal means they are not ordered. They don't need to be ordered. While ordinal, it has order. Stage one, stage two, stage three, mild, moderate, severe. Okay, grade one, grade two, grade three, it's order. It has an order. Small, medium, large, it has an order. Okay, so pain score. You will tell the patient, we have here grades of pain uh, ordered from zero to 10. Please tell us which one of them is your level of pain. So she will mark here. It means Party. she has more than medium. Okay, or she can make it here, severe pain. Here's the numbers from 0 to 10. Do you think they are real numbers? No. no. Do you think pain score 2 plus pain score 3 equal 5? No, no, no. They, they are not numbers like this. They are stages to severity of pain. Typical like stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 mild, moderate, severe. So they are not real numbers. It's not quantity, it's a quality. Ordered or not, ordered from zero to 10. So ordinal is answer. It's repeated exam question in, in part one and in part two. 
फोर्थ मोड क्लियर ओके दिस इज द क्वेश्चन अबाउट एक्स एंड वाई इट्स अ रिकॉल पेशेंट कंसेंटेड फॉर लैपारोस्कोपिक हिस्ट्रेक्टमी she had before removed a dermoid intraoperative there is a dermoid it's called x so x is the dermoid adherent to the pelvic wall in the ovary why we want to do laparoscopic hysterectomy and we found the dermoid hmm. what do you think d Go as go as plan. Go as plan. What is the meaning of go as plan? Means do the. Don't remove the remove. Proceed with hysterectomy as consent. Don't touch the remote system. So I didn't take consent to remove the ovaries. So I will not remove the ovaries, and I will not remove the dermoid. So what you will do is a laparoscopic hysterectomy, remove the uterus. Okay, so go as planned. Don't remove Y. Don't remove X. Just remove the uterus. Okay. Second one. Sir, Abandus here we can take a biopsy, sir. Biopsy we can take. Biopsy if looks malignant. If suspecting a cancer, take biopsy. Here said dermoid. No need for biopsy. Okay. Appendectomy. Appendix normal, but there is torted ischemic right tube. So, what is your diagnosis? Torsion. Torsion. Hydrocelping started. Torsion. So. Torsion. Abandon and further assessment. H detorsion and appendectomy. H detorsion and appendectomy. H detorsion and appendectomy. H. As appendix is not normal at the operation, it may be microscopic inflammation. H is answered. You take consent for appendectomy, it will be removed. What about this torsion? Detorsion. Take care. What we do in torsion is detorsion, even if there is cyst. If you don't remove the cyst, we don't remove the cyst in the same setting. Tissues are congested. Edematous. You cannot do surgery in this tissue. Just do detorsion. And you can plan for another setting, or you can do assessment of the cyst later to see if removed, if to be removed or not. Sir, but it is showing ischemic ischemic tube, no, sir. Just the detorsion. The blood flow will return. Okay. Uh, the talk article which contains the data about uh, about torsion said even if sorry even if Looks dark, violet. Just do detorsion. Just do detorsion. So detorsion and the appendix to be removed as consented. So H is the answer. Okay, consented for laparotomy and appendectomy. The surgeon called you. Hey, I find also assist six centimeter. Hmm. Abandon for the assessment. B. Abandon it. Further the assessment. Abandon and further assessment. Further assessment. Further assessment. Further assessment. Further assessment. Don't touch. Remove appendix. He will remove the appendix. Yes. Yes. Okay. The question is asking Abandon what further assessment. Gynecologist, you are going to do. For me, I will not touch the ovarian cyst. Notice, 
He is not asking you, uh, hey, uh, do I remove the appendix or not? He is not asking you about this. The surgeon is asking you because he found a cyst. Do, do we need to remove the cyst or not? While the appendix, he removed. Okay. So the question says instead. So instead of appendix, he has found a cyst. There is appendix is normal. Here, as a gynecologist, I will abandon. Mm -hmm. but, I will not interfere. And later, I will count the patient about. But in appendicitis, thirty percent of the cases are. Normal. And we need to do ultrasound. We may need MRI. We make. We may find that it's a small and a simple. No need for management. You know, less than five. Don't touch. Five to seven. Okay, follow up. More than seven, surgery or MRI. If simple cyst. If not simple, according to CE 125, more than 200 or less than 200 and so on. Less than 40, we need multiple tumor markers. HCG, lactic dehydrogenase, alpha fetoprotein, and CE 125. Okay. When they investigated fetal hypoxia, what B. was the cause number one? Inability B. to B. read CTG. E. That's right. Better. Inability to read CTG, followed by inability to act. Inability or not to act. To make a decision. Mm -hmm. Excellent. A woman and died. A woman died from genital sepsis. Occurred at 30 weeks, uh, uh, 30 weeks gestation. The question, what is the most common site of infection leading to septic shock in pregnancy? Again, what is the most urinary common blood site? Blood urinary blood UTI. Urinary blood UTI. Urinary blood UTI. My question to you, what is the commonest infection you see during the pregnancy? UTI. 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 Urinary tract. UTI, bilonephritis, it's the commonest thing that we see. Not pneumonia, not gastroenteritis. No, we see UTI, which can lead to sepsis. So the answer is UTI and the urinary tract. He is the answer. Uh, notice uh, in the slide that the question is like this. You will find the order different. OK, so. You will find E, D, A, but we will choose E, urinary tract, because uh, I take it screenshot from my Facebook group. Okay, so UTI. Okay, another question. What will make you classify a 26 year old woman with hemophilia? What will make you classify her as obligate carrier? Obligate carrier. Let's solve this question. Give me a chance. Okay. When her when her son what? is a carrier, or when her maternal uh, side uncle is a carrier. What is the of inheritance of hemophilia. X-linked recessive. X-linked recessive. X-linked recessive. Perfect. Okay. X-linked recessive. Second question. Dr. Khairaya, how do you have a kiss in the mic? Okay. This is the first question. And I have a kiss in the mic. Second question. And I'm going to ask you. And I'm going to ask you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, at first, it's X-linked and recessive. Okay, my second point. X-linked recessive. So, can you tell me? This point means uh, uh, gene abnormal. So, what is your diagnosis to this scenario? <laughs> Affected. 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 Affected.
في مشكلة في ميل في ميل افكتد في ميل اوكي وات از ذس كارير في ميل كارير في ميل كارير في ميل وات از ذا كويستشن اباوت اوكي وات از ذس افكتد ميل افكتد ميل افكتد ميل Excellent. 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 Excellent.
in X linked condition. Okay. If she has affected some, yes. We said yes. Okay. The remaining options. If she has affected some and the father is a carrier, can the father no, be a carrier? No. Wrong. No. 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 no male carrier in X linked condition. Her father affected, okay. Or she has affected son, okay. And affected relative in maternal line. Wow. Very good. Okay. B. Father affected. And he has son as a carrier. Sorry. I'm no, right. no, Sorry, no. wrong. Son cannot be carrier. So what is the answer? C is the answer. C is the answer. C is the answer. Notice the letters are different. D, E, A, F, C, B. C is the answer. If the son deceased or father deceased or the, the gene present in the mother's family, so the mother also can be carrier. You got this point? Clear? Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, the last slide. Formative and summative. We said for formative, you will receive feedback. Summative, it's a matter of pass or fail. Very important, many kicks. Formative only. There are no types of many kicks. Sorry, many kicks only formative. While OSATs can be formative and summative, and, and, and they can be summative. We have two types. Okay, job interview, they may accept you in the job or not. MRSOG part one and part two exam and part three exam, it's either you will pass or not. Driving license, either you will take the license or not. ARCB, either you will continue or not. Mock exam, formative. Taking a course and containing some questions. CBD questions present in the talk articles. Mock exam, it's formative. You will receive feedback. It's not a matter of pass or fail. They ask frequently in the exam about OSATs, MINICEX, and MRCOG exams. All MRCOG exams are summative, except if it's a mock test. You are taking a course and there is mock test, like the one we will have later, inshallah. The notes will also be in the formative? Formative means you will receive feedback. It's not a real exam, not an exam. No, there I is no decision. Will be based upon this. There is no decision. Will be based upon this. Okay, so if you pass, no problem. You didn't pass, no problem. We will give you feedback, and you can improve yourself later. No problem. But summative Victor, are decisions based upon your results. Victor, uh, sorry, uh, I joined late. This uh, lecture is already recorded or no? Yes, this lecture is already 